last 15 minutes. I, I have a, a whole lot of uh, uh, dives, uh, uh, videos. Now, the, the videos I have, I, I first want to say, I don't know if Dave is on here, but uh, Dave Stark, who is the... Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not started. Maryland Public Schools, uh, he is the rules interpreter for the uh, swimming and diving. That's all the public schools in Maryland. And he was very gracious in sending me over lots of videos. Happens to be the videos of the state diving championships a couple of years ago. Um, but there's certainly uh, certainly uh, good, good to see there and uh, lots for all of us to discuss in terms of uh, you know, just refreshing and giving ourselves a reminder of, uh, you know, what you're doing and why we're here and all that fun stuff. So hopefully I won't bore you to tears here, though. Uh, the trial run was last week. So um, if anybody was here last week, hey, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about here. But we'll try to get all this stuff going through. If you have questions, please put those in the chat. What I'll try to do is pick a few spots and, and take a moment and try to answer the questions. But again, I want to try to make sure that we get through all the material that we need to. Again, so we should be able to go through rather quickly. It'll all be just a reminder of what all of you should already know. Fair enough? Sorry, Stephen. Can I just jump in? Good. You said this is for recertification? It's all recertification. OK, because this is my first time. So am I in the wrong meeting then, I take it? Okay. You can stay. <laughs> You're welcome to stay. It's just that I'm, I'm trying to do it for, for the benefit of our veterans here to try to not keep them here longer than it's absolutely necessary, but we'll, we'll go through it all. Okay. So okay. it's five after, and I want to go ahead and get things uh, rolling here. Let me go ahead and get my uh, presentation brought up. <laughs> And I don't, mind, I don't mind sharing with you all. I, I, you know, for one thing, first of all, thank you to Dave and Teresa for being, uh, for, uh, for helping me along with this and getting. Thank you, Steve. This, this oh, thank you. Together for all of you. Um, I will also say that it's amazing how certain things happen at the very last moment. I, don't, I won't lie to you folks. The very computer and screen I'm using here uh, actually onto the floor and I thought everything was broken because my pup chased the, pu uh, the kitten out of the room and took a few cables with her. But amazingly, we're here. That means we're going to have a good night. So, hey, what can I tell you? All right. Uh, let me go ahead and bring this up. And I will go ahead. I will share this with you all. Okay, can everybody see that? Everybody see that okay? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Okay, so this is recertification night for uh, our dive judges. You know, you've, you've either had been through this once, twice, or more times than maybe you care to admit, but you're here, and it's very much appreciated that you are here tonight. You are here for the benefit of the student athletes. And to me, that's that's number one in my list. I appreciate that of all of you. OK, um, don't have to go through all the beginnings. Most of you know, we, we officially started as a league in 1982. We were born out of the uh, Montgomery County Swim League. Uh, a little bit of history and things like that. Uh, not to bore you with all the details and all that, but that's essentially how long we've been around. OK, just a reminder here, you know, as a league we are a developmental recreational league okay that's a bit different than maybe the olympics you're watching and uh, usa diving college diving uh and even the high schools our rules are a little bit different but we have this set up as such that we want to uh you know help help the kids of all ages so our age range i have here you know say four to five up to 18 but actually this year as many of you probably know, um, because of everything happening with COVID, the 19-year-olds will be allowed to dive this year. They're going to have their own event category. I assume events 11 and 12, if you're following the paperwork and so forth, will um, 
We'll touch on that in a bit. Um, there's some uh, some things for you as a judge. I'd like to uh, oh, no, um, you all about uh, when we come to that. Okay. And so our league, just a reminder, we're a little bit different here. So, you know, we're, we, we set this up to make the competition uh, a bit easier for those beginners and so forth. Um, but we still use those same criteria. Everything you learn to do as a judge, everything you, 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 you know and how you judge a dive and so forth, those standards, you stay with those. You know, and as a judge, you, you certainly will apply those standards. You want to be consistent. You got to be fair no matter who it is on the board. <clears throat> that's, that's, uh, that should be your own uh, motivation there. So everybody, just a reminder, everybody's got a job here. The coaches, they get paid for what they're doing. The rest of us are volunteers, and we're there in support, not just the coaches and, and the, the other ones around, but you are supporting the student athletes. And, yes, our divers are the student athletes, and you are part of their development and, uh, and the big picture. And diving is just, you know, one part of it. But, you know, we are part of that, that, that big picture there, Okay. Again, coaches, they serve as guides and role models. You hope that their, their focus is to always show the positive, you know, making sure that they're, they're, they're doing right by the divers, the student athletes, as, as they will. Okay, we, we always want to promote the goodwill of this, this sport. Diving is what I like to call, you know, the, the, it's, it's art and athleticism combined along with the, you know, uh, so many other things, just, you know, I guess the beauty of the, of the sport itself. Um, other jobs, as you already know about here, these, the reason I list all these table work announcer, referee and judges, it's a reminder to all people who are working at the meet, you're all officials. You are all working as officials for the meet in one capacity or the other. So it's really important that we all stay focused for, you know, for the, for the good of the meet, uh, good for the kids, uh, keeping ourselves focused on the task at hand. And then a the reminder for the referee, the referee is the head official for these meets. Um, and that's, that's going to be the person to go to in terms of the focus of what's going on during, uh, for the most part, the dual meets. My understanding is that there will be divisional meets this year. So you, know, you probably have uh, maybe one or two referees working if that is uh, if we're following our rules on that. Um, I don't know what's, I don't believe there's going to be an all-star meet this year, but um, stay tuned. We'll see how it goes. So again, reminder for you judges, you're part of that three to five judge panel made up of you, the parents uh, and others. And, and if you run short, uh, coaches do qualify put them in the chairs, but hopefully you have enough folks on hand. Okay, um, I think you all know how you became a dive judge. I don't need to get into the long explanation because otherwise you wouldn't be here. So um, um, just some of the reminders for you all, what to look for. It's important that you, uh, if you don't already have a copy of the MCDL handbook, you can certainly download a PDF copy of that at the website. But for you as a judge, I emphasize here, what pages in the, well, the 2019 version of the book, which I guess is our latest that we're doing. We haven't updated the, uh, the current handbook uh, or made it new. So those pages, 1522, um, there's some parts in between. It's more for the referee and some other things, but page 32 to 37. And then I threw in here from last week, pages 45 to 48. Those are the silhouettes that actually will show you at least on a, you know, a sketch drawing of what the dives should be looking like, or at least a good portion of them. So those are just fair reminders to kind of look and see what you've got. Um, the other things, of course, being fair and impartial at all times, which I know you will. Um, and also the reminder, I put this in here now, and I'll say it again uh, later on, you're always going to judge the dive. You're not judging the diver. I know that becomes a little bit complex and a little bit difficult because people you know and certain expectations and so forth, but we'll talk a little bit about uh, those biases that are conscious and unconscious uh, later on in this session here, but we'll be getting to that soon enough. Again, reminder, you're calling things as you see it. Always, always keep in mind, you as a judge, whatever score you throw, that is a score you keep uh, nobody's going to question that. 
and the referee is always going to have your back no matter what the situation is. Um, your score is what's there. It will never be protested, but that's okay. Um, it'll be within yourselves to you know, determine if you need to make adjustments as you go along. But again, we'll, we'll talk about that. So, so I put it here also, you can expect to mess up. That's just a reminder. We all mess up at all levels. I've done, I've done it more times than, and I, I don't have a problem admitting that I've messed up quite a few times. It's, you know, it's a human factor. Sometimes it just some things you see and, and so that, that I see that somebody else won't see or don't see, and that's okay. That's totally okay. You know, you just make your call and uh, move on. That's just a fair reminder. Okay. So again, the, the dive in this league, uh, it's the four basic elements here, the approach, takeoff, flight through the air and entry. Um, that might be a little bit different than say maybe high school. Uh, and perhaps that's, that's for, different for other leagues. Other leagues tend to consider the starting position um, we kind of incorporate that in, and again, we'll, we can talk about that uh, in a bit um, as to what that means. So again, you're considering all the elements when you're judging and scoring, and uh, you're checking for that proper form and grace, okay? Um, so breaking it down, okay, for the four parts of the dive, again, these are just reminders, um, just a reminder that um, the divers movements going up to get into a starting position. Um, you know, if they're walking around or whatever, before they've even assumed the starting position, anything that's going on with them until they get set, you don't take any consideration in terms of that there, you know, it could be talking to a coach or whatever, but it'll become quite obvious no matter what they're doing. If they're doing a standing dive or if they're doing with a forward approach or running, you're going to know when that diver has established that set position. So again, um, so for the approach for that starting position and the standing dives, a reminder, they're on the front end of the board. Okay, they should have their feet right parked right at the end of the board, perhaps even have their toes right off the edge of the board, curling the end of the, the board if they want, whatever it may be. The point is they're on the end of the board. Um, some of the younger kids may not be quite at the end of the board, but that's okay. You don't really have to go picking on them about that. But if they're doing a standing dive, it's just a reminder, they're standing with the body straight, the head is up, they've got things, you know, their head's erect and looking forward, they're not looking down or not looking up, they want to look straight forward, okay? And the arms, it doesn't matter what position they're in, some of them like to have their arms straight down, some like to have them out to the side, you know, some like to have them straight out, like, you know, the, you know, like a zombie or something, but you know, it doesn't matter as long as they establish that set position and those arms are where they are at the start. When they start their dive and they start doing arm movements, that's, that's not a problem. But again, it's a matter of making sure they establish a start. Okay. So that, so the other one is the, uh, the, the forward approach of running dives. Again, reminder, you're going to know when they're, they're going to be set. Okay, you look for that, and they, they have to establish that. Okay, they're ready to attempt that first step of the dive once they've set. Okay, and that first step begins that approach. Okay, so where we're talking about where they're starting the dive, that's when you realize they're in the set position. That's, that's actually the beginning of the dive. Okay, that's where point deductions or things like that could happen if they do a false start, which is a balk, or if they, they do some other things or or, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So there's the approach. Um, the takeoff, again, reminders of this. So you're going on the approach, the takeoff to a hurdle, it's gonna be from one foot, and then they'll end up landing on the end of the board with both feet after you do their hurdle. Now, again, I wanna remind folks, I know in the book it says the takeoff from one foot and so forth, we don't wanna get it confused because there are two types of, of approaches to a hurdle that we have in this league, there's going to be that standard three, four, five step to a hurdle that most of the kids and probably all of the kids who are just learning a running approach are going to be doing that. Some of the older divers do that, but the more experienced divers are going to do uh, what's called uh, three, four, five steps and then the, the hop hurdle. 
The hop hurdle is perfectly fine. You're going to notice that in some of the videos we have here and those parents who have those divers who do USA diving and, and high school and some of the others who have done this and developed their talents, they know what I'm talking about. So I want to make it clear them using the hop hurdle as opposed to doing the three, four or five step hurdle. Those are both acceptable here. Uh, that's not to get a confuse of doing a, a balk uh, from a hurdle, that's that's something different that we'll we'll touch on. So, what is the takeoff? You should expect that to be smooth, forceful, uh, and the diver is showing confident and controlled. I like to link that part of smooth and controlled together, and that's why I kind of bookend this thing because everything else in between, as they're doing that takeoff, the divers should always be showing a good degree of confidence in and how they're doing that. And I hope, uh, you always hope that happens. But again, we're a developmental league. You're gonna see all different aspects of this. Um, flight through the air, this is where all the, uh, all the different positions come into play. Uh, again, reminder, you've got straight position, pike position, tuck, uh, free position, which is not actually a position, but it is and can be a combination of, of a, a couple of the different positions that you see listed here. Um, and again, the silhouettes are listed on page 45 to 48. And I put these in here just to show you again, just to remind you, this is good reference to kind of get help you get a picture in your mind of what, you know, the straight position while the diver is doing a flight is. That body is not bent at the hips or the knees. It should not be. The feet are together, toes pointed during the entry. You also notice on this silhouette here that this, this stick drawing shows that the diver is arching their back. That's perfectly fine. When we're saying the body is straight, that isn't to say they can't do some arching back and so forth. That's okay. You know, all kids have different body shapes and all that, but you, you understand the point. If they can show that they're out there and they're keeping that straight position and their back arches a bit, that's perfectly acceptable. The problem you have is if they start bending and going the other way when they're starting to break that position. And we'll talk about that as well. Pike position, just like it is here in the book. The body is bent at the hips or the waist, if you will, and the legs are straight at the knees. Nothing terribly surprising there, folks. Um, sure, you've seen it plenty of times there, okay? Pike should be as tight and compact as possible. Again, you can see here, like in part number five of this, or four and five, where they're bringing that in. Now, he's doing that where he's touching the toes, and that's fine. I've seen some of the divers, actually, they're going to uh, bend at the waist real tight, and their arms go past their legs. That's perfectly fine, too. Um, but again, it's a matter of taste and what you like to see. Um, so again, that, that should be compact. You're going to see kids that are going to be trying to do a pike that look like they're about a quarter of the way there and then they come out of it. So again, that's what you're going to see a lot of in the developmental stages of these divers. Um, the tuck position, that's a combination of having bend at the hips and the knees. The knees and feet are together. Uh, and we'll talk about the knees being together, that there are some deductions for that that you as a judge should be looking for. I hope you're going to be looking for. Again, that tuck needs to be tight to the body. It should be compact. The hands on the lower legs, just as is showing in this illustration here, four or five and six there, you can see where this diver is pulling the knees to the body. And that's what you're always hoping to see when they're doing a tuck position. But I think what you probably are going to be seeing is a lot of those slap the side of the knee tucks. And you folks who have seen the diving, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of that that goes on. That's not really a legitimate tuck, but it meets the criteria and you as a judge can take it from there. Okay. Um, and then last part here with the free position uh, used in the twisting dives. Uh, that free position is also earmarked technically for the lineups and also the jumps. Technically those are free position, but we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. So again, that twisting, uh, the, free uh, the free position, if you will, uh, is that combination of all or, or some of the three positions, straight pike and tuck. A lot of the 
twisting dives that we have with the exception of a, of a handful of the twisting dives are going to be straight or pike positions kind of like what you're seeing here with this 5132 um and this being this uh you know one and a half somersault one twist and i've got a video i'm going to show everybody a live video well not so live video obviously um so you kind of get that idea of what what that's going to look like again just a reminder um again legs are together toes pointed whichever position it is you notice that with all positions the legs are to be together and the toes pointed it should be keeping the toes pointed all the way through but especially when they're doing the entry and we'll get to that so on the entry again we want to make sure that the divers are going in as vertical as possible that is optimal uh, we we hope that they do sometimes they're going to go a little bit a little bit forward they're going to over rotate or whatever they may be they may under rotate you're going to see some of that in the videos i'm going to show you here again toes are pointed going into the uh, water so what it essentially means is that all that business that they're doing up there in the flight through the air if the divers are getting enough height for whatever dive they're doing all the business should be done up here should all be up in the air above the board and so forth. They get all their turns or twists or whatever they're doing and they straighten up the body and they go in as straight as possible. Okay. And that optimal spot again, uh, like to see that three or four feet from the end of the board. Um, that's real good. Um, but they don't want to be going too far away, which you may end up seeing a lot of, and I'm sure you already have, is that some of the kids are just not getting the height. And I like to say they, they torpedo themselves where they're not coming up and coming down. They're doing more of the launch. They're launching out and they're not getting good height. And by the time they hit the water, they're probably hitting it at 45 degrees. So that's a problem with the entry there. Um, certainly a no splash entry is great. Uh, I guess they call it a rip entry. If you see little splash when they're going in, that's always nice to see. Those, that, that can be considered as well and should be considered. Uh, again, uh, head first entry, those arms should be stretched up above the head, clearly above the head. You know, it's all safety here. They can't be down here. It's a problem. They shouldn't be going in with their arms at the sides or down. That's a safety issue. And that's going to be point deductions and it should be a referee call and make it a deficient dive. Again, we'll talk about that. Um, and the feet first entry, again, the arms should be down. They should be down by the side. Usually the kids, if they're doing it right, they're gonna have it glued right to the side of their body and down by their legs and everything is good. But again, when we talk about the jumps that they can do, the 100 and the 200, the arms can be in any position. That's gonna be your only exception when they do a feet first entry where the arm position would be okay so let me just show you this real quick this young lady's going to do the 5132 okay so again this is a forward one and a half somersault she's going to do a full twist it's not necessarily a perfect dive but it's worth looking at to see what she's got incorporated here again remind yourself what are you going to look for here and we're going to go ahead and look at some of these dives in a bit and and you'll be able to go ahead and and you know, go along and, and uh, call it like you see it. Bear with me one second here. Um, okay, um, so here we go. Again, just again, we're looking for four parts of this. The approach, the takeoff, the flight, what's going on up in the air and the entry. So let's see how she does here. It's a good approach, flight, probably need a little bit more height and there's her entry. Okay, I'm sure you've seen a few of those. Okay, again, moving on. Um, I just want to take a moment here and peek at any questions. Um, just I'll throw it out here. If you have a, um, just to throw it out there, I see were there any changes to the rules? I don't believe there was any particular rules that were changed that I know of. The only thing that we're doing is we're adding in allowing the 19 year olds. Um, as far as I know, that's the only uh, addendum uh, you know, to the rules that we have, but generally you're gonna follow those rules that are listed, um, listed uh, 
Okay. Okay. Anyway, so again, all the all the rules that you follow, you, the, the same rules you have for 2019, and that's what I'm going with. Again, okay. Look, back to this. Um, all the dives, all the ones that you know. Obviously, we got forward, back, reverse, and inward dive, and then those twisting dives may incorporate uh, uh, any of the four. Uh, um, what direction they're going in? Are they starting forward, back? Are they going to do a reverse and, and so forth? So, and also in here, I sent this out to the board last night. This is a combine. I put this table together a few years ago and I updated it uh, going into 2019. Hopefully, this will be on the website soon. It's a nice thing uh, for anybody, not just the, the 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 referees and table workers, but it is nice for the the judges. They kind of get an idea of all the dives that we have. Everything that's on the, these pages here. Now, with the exception that second one that has twisting dives, I will tell you that. Um, however, way I transpose this onto the slide, it seems like I've lopped off a few of the uh, the dives that we do incorporate here as twisting dives, but they're all there is the point. So look for that. If you want to get a copy of that electronic copy, it's nice to have. If you want to print it off, it works real well. You can print it off and put it back to back on one sheet of paper, laminate it, and you're good to go. Uh, but this does list all of the dives that are legal for MCDL. Um, again, reminder, if you want to know about dive number explanations, you can look on page 15. It lays everything out for you to tell you exactly how this is. Um, again, 103, what are we doing? It's a forward dive. The, the three represents how many half rotations. So that's a one and a half. And C is going to tell you what position. You know, looking at the, the 5,000s, those twisting dives, Nothing, you know, the same thing here. The 51 is going to tell you the forward uh, position, uh, or forward uh, direction, that is. And then the, the two, uh, the, the, the five one, then the two, the third number there is how many uh, rotations. That's how many somersaults, how many half somersaults are doing. So in this case, you're doing one somersault. And then the last number will tell you how many half twists are going. In this case here, you have a full twist. So that's a forward one somersault with a full twist. The reason I put this in here, I want to remind you folks that when you hear the dive being announced and so forth, especially on twisting dives, you get the more, I guess you can say more complex dives. If you look at those last two numbers, if they're an even number, you can always say that it's going to be whatever position the diver is facing, meaning in this case, they're facing out to the water. That's where they're going to end up when they hit the water. OK, so they're just going to do one somersault, but they're going to do one twist. So they're going to end up in the same direction. But if they did a 51 21 and which they're only doing a half twist, they better be facing back at the dive stand. If they're not, then they've done the wrong dive. So those for those who haven't quite caught on to that, I just wanted to do that friendly reminder. Um, OK, um, the other ones we have, again, are the lineups. The lineups can be replaced by any diver in place of like the forward lineup can be uh, can replace uh, the 101, which is going to be that required dive for everyone. Um, and the line at the back lineup can also replace a back dive um, by pretty much any diver if that's what they choose to do. Um, doesn't matter what level they are. We haven't incorporated a rule to say that the 13 and ups can't do it. Um, but that could be something all of you can talk about at some time down the road. Jumps, again, the forward jump and back jump, um, the 100 and the 200. Again, all these lineups and jumps are all in a free position. Um, that would be the only other, these are the only ones that have free position that aren't uh, twisting dives. Um, degree of difficulty, the only reason I put this in here is just so you, you, you get a look-see and see the range of what we've got here. But you as judges, should have nothing to do with this. This is for the table, this is for the referees and so forth. When you're judging a dive, you absolutely do not, do not incorporate the degree of difficulty and don't let that be a bias or something that's gonna skew you in terms of what your job is as a judge. You should be looking at what, what is going on in the four parts of a dive. It doesn't matter what the dive is, you need to know what the dive is supposed to look like in your mind. 
forget the idea that, okay, according to the degree of difficulty, it's this hard to do. That's not what you're looking for. You're there to look at the dive to see if it's been completing, completed and met all the criteria that you expect it to do or what it, you expect it to be, okay? Hopefully that, that all makes sense. Okay, scoring scale, put this in here. Uh, th this is what we adopted two or three years ago. Again, it's on page 16 of the handbook or the printout, whatever you may have there. Um, you all should be familiar with that. You know, just the target things there. Um, typically when I'm judging, I start somewhere in the middle, especially in this league, um, because I, it's, it's, um, it's what you can say you're used to seeing, but again, that would be defeating what I'm, the message I'm trying to get across. It doesn't matter when or where or whatever you're doing in terms of judging. It should be a new day, a different person, and you don't know that person on the board. So point being here is that you've got a whole scale to use here. Don't be afraid to use a whole scale. It's there at your disposal. And nobody's going to criticize you if you, you throw something a little high, a little lower, whatever. If you're satisfied with what you, you did, fine. You need to make adjustments, go ahead and do it. Um, your criteria, um, some of the standards you have for yourself here. Okay, again, um, you got to remember, again, you're, you're judging all four parts of the dive, no matter what the dive is. And again, we can talk a little bit about, you know, when we're talking about doing back dives and so forth, how we incorporate that. Again, you're not considering the DD. Um, that, that shouldn't factor in at all whatsoever. You know what it is, but it shouldn't be, any part of what you're trying to accomplish. Again, you're providing that fair contest. There's gonna be biases and things like that that may be creeping up and so forth, but you need to put those aside. You're judging that dive, not the diver. Again, see that creeped up in there again, I put that there. Um, and of course you will be looking for those deductions as they apply, okay? So again, broke this down, the point deductions for the, the different parts, what you can be looking for. Um, again, these are just reminders here. So if a diver doesn't come to a full uh, starting position, it's going to be your call as a judge to take a point or two if, it, if they don't actually come to like a full stop and you're not satisfied that they came to a complete stop. That's going to be a judge's call there. Um, but the next one's here in, in, in the standing or running uh, starts. If that diver goes ahead and makes an, an attempt to, to start, a dive, whether it's approach, a press or whatever, and then stops um, and then tries to restart, that's gonna be a buck. Now that's the referee call, as you all know. Um, they can reset and go ahead and try it again. If they if they balk again, uh, the referee is gonna stop that and say that's, a, that's two balks, failed dive. They won't be able to complete the dive, okay? Um, running dive, again, must incorporate a minimum of one step before the hurdle. And even at those, those hop hurdles, they're going to have that one step. They're going to be taken off on the hurdle off of one foot, okay? Um, and both feet must contact the end of the board after the hurdle. That's where they're going to be starting their flight through the air. So if they take off and they do a bunny hop going down the board or something like that, and they're going into their, their hurdle off of both feet, referees should be calling a balk. Um, what I'll remind you, is that in, in, in a lot of cases, I would tell you that if you feel like the referee might have missed a call or something like that, you're not going to make the call on their behalf. But if you feel like you need to take points off for something, don't hesitate to do it. I would say the same thing when we start talking about failed dives. I always emphasize when I'm refereeing that you as a judge, if you see something, especially on twisting dives or whatever it may be, if you think a dive has failed, fail the dive. It's okay. You're not showing anybody up. It just means you see something that somebody else didn't. But please don't be afraid to fail a dive if nobody else does it or gives us a low score. In this league, you're bound to see some scores that are just all over the place, but that's okay. But within yourselves, if you're doing your, your, your due diligence and you're focusing, you'll be fine. Um, take off. Um, I put this in here, just a reminder really for, for everyone. There is a big difference between a standing approach and a running approach. Obviously, if they're incorporating a hurdle where they're going to gain some height, 
that should be a factor in how you're seeing the flight through the air. Are they getting enough height to do whatever they're trying to do? Even if it's just a normal front dive, um, but you should be looking for that. Height is important when it comes to scoring and judging. So there is going to be an inherent difference of that. And as you all know, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, um, but again, it's just a reminder. There is going to be that difference there um, in terms of whether they're going to do a running approach for the hurdle or they're going to try to do their takeoff from a standing position. Um, the flight, again, this is where all the positions come into play here, that straight position. Um, again, body held straight, leg straight, no bending of the hips and, or the knees. So if the knees or hips bend at any point during the flight, the referee may call a break in position. But I would also remind you as the judges, if you see a break and it doesn't get called by the referee, it may be something that's borderline. But in your opinion, what you see as a break in position, if you feel like only giving it four and a half or even less, that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. Same thing with a pike position. Pike position bent, the hips are bent or at the waist, but the legs and the knees are always straight, the toes are pointed. Um, again, so if you have anything that's a, uh, a break there, if the knees bend, that's some of the things you can look for, especially in some of these divers coming in where they have a pike position and they're going to straighten up. The next thing you know, they folded to their knee for some reason. Okay, that's, that is technically a break in position and it should be called by the referee. But if it's not, you as a judge, you see it, go ahead and call it, okay? Tuck position, body bent hips. Again, the same thing we talked about. The knees and the feet are together, okay? And the toes pointed. The open knees and some call it the cowboy or whatever, because I know that in the um, in international diving, it seems like I see that those open knee uh, position, I guess that's what they allow there. We don't allow it here. We're not supposed to allow it here. It doesn't stop the divers from doing it anyways, but you as a judge should be looking to do that one to two point deduction on that. That's the judge's call, okay? Uh, free position, again, combination of those three there, the straight uh, or pike uh, or tuck. Um, use those twisting dives as listed in the table. There's gonna be some of those twisting dives that are not all free position dives. Some are just strictly a pike position or even a tuck position. So there's a listing here where uh, the free position dives, at least in our league, where a tuck position may be used, incorporated. They're listed here. You can follow up with those in the book, but uh, otherwise use of, uh, use of a tuck when it's not, uh, not allowed other than these dives, that becomes a problem. Not all referees catch this when it happens. Maybe you as a judge will catch it and then you could, you could make that call. But again, um, if it gets called, that's gonna be considered a deficient dive and it should be no more than four and a half points max when that comes up. So flight through the air, continue on that. Referee can declare that unsatisfactory when it's absolutely clear that that diver has done a position other than what was announced. They just do, they end up doing a pike when they're supposed to do, uh, uh, or they, they end up doing a tuck when they're supposed to do a pike or the other way around. It just depends. Um, or if it's supposed to be straight and you see them fold into a 90 degree, I mean, that's, that's completely going into a different position. That's more than a break in position. Referees should be catching that and they should, and they likely will catch that. That's an out of position dive that's considered unsatisfactory. Judge is gonna tell you no more than two points on that or whatever you may end up getting. Um, so again, and then the referee can declare the deficient. The deficient dives are where it's a four point max or below. Um, when you're talking about the, the break in position, partial position, again, not beating a dead horse, but you all know what a break in position is, okay? Twisting dives, the reminder here, the unfortunate here in this league, and I think we probably ought to change this, but I'm not gonna advocate that right now, but just a reminder that no twist, no twisting dive, they cannot begin to twist or start turning their shoulders or showing any complexity of doing a twisting dive while their feet are still in contact with the board. If they do, the referee should be calling that as a failed dive. I know in other leagues that's not so harsh, but unfortunately that's what we have in our league here. It is what it is. 
Um, the fail dive reminder here. Uh, also, when we're talking about the twisting dives, whether a diver under twists or over twists, again, this has to do with um, where the shoulders are at, at first contact with the water, whether they're doing a feet first entry or head first entry, doesn't make any difference. One of the things to look for, the referee should be looking for, even when it's close, if it's very close, hopefully the referee doesn't say anything because if it is that close, you wanna give the benefit of the doubt to the diver. But if the diver has twisting in and they're that close to turning it into a different dive, you as a judge really need to think about what you're gonna give that diver for the, the, their, your final score because they've either over twisted or they've under twisted. They really haven't done a clean dive. Again, those are just reminders to you all there. Um, the entry, um, also the four and a half point max would be that referee call if the arm's in the wrong position. Again, when they go feet first entry here, the arm's gotta be down. They could be below the shoulder and technically not be declared deficient, but you as a judge ought to be looking if these arms are up in the wrong position. You gotta, you gotta consider, is that clean? Is that, you know, is that aesthetically pleasing? Probably not. But again, that's gonna be your call as a judge. Okay, um, and that's with the head first entry again, those hands need to be up here, up above the head. Hopefully the hands are together. Usually a lot of them might just cross their hands as they're going in, that's fine. Some like to do the wish position here, you know, uh, that's fine. Um, as long as the arms are in the right place, if they're going head first in, um, and also the referee on that entry, if they're doing in doing it wrong, if it's supposed to be head first entry and somehow they're one or two of their feet touch first, that's doing the wrong dive as well. Technically that is a failed dive, okay? And vice versa. If they're, if they're supposed to be feet first and somehow they get their hands and they didn't get the right rotations, those are things that referee and you as a judge should be looking for and then determine whether that dive actually has made it. If a diver, again, is that close to failing it, you as a judge need to consider what your scores are and what you ought to be doing with that. Um, some other calls to look at, referee, uh, if you have some kind of outside interference that disrupts the flow of the diver uh, trying to uh, conduct the dive, if the diver, uh, if, if it's legitimate, it's gonna be the diver asking if they can redo the dive from the referee, not the coach. Um, but again, that, that'll be more of a referee thing. Spoiled dives, um, again, that, that divers can ask for that, but it's just food for thought there, but that's really for the referees to worry about. Um, I put this in here about assisting the diver because we've got three different categories here. Um, and we're talking about, you know, before they begin the dive, just these, again, these are just reminders. They could be walking around and, you know, singing a song or doing whatever, talking up the storm with a coach prior to them actually establishing that set starting position. And there's no issue there. But here, what I mentioned earlier about, there may be some issues after they get set. And it has happened before you have a diver that goes ahead and lines up and gets set into a position, which is an incorrect starting position. Maybe they go out there and, uh, you know, they're, they're supposed to be doing a, a forward dive, or maybe they were supposed to do a back dive and they're lining up to do a forward dive. They get set and the coach says wrong position or somebody screams out wrong position. That's an intervention before they actually started uh, the approach. So, that right there, we changed this a few years ago. We changed that to a balk, and that should be a referee call. But any diver who's getting any assistance while that, once they start that approach and they start the dive and they get any help whatsoever, anybody calling anything out or interfering or whatever uh, with that, um, that can be, you know, if, if the referee determines that that is assisting the diver, the, the referee can fail that. It's a rarity for that to happen. And I mean a real rarity. And I haven't seen that actually happen in years. But of course, I'm not at every pool to see it. And I'm sure you as judges are going to see a bit of that. Um, maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're like me, you never see it. Um, but it can happen. But we have those in place. OK, uh, quick summary here of where the failed dives are, which we call completely failed, the assistance we talked about. Diver doing the wrong dive, 
diver refusing to do a dive or falls in the water, falls off side board, uh, over and under twisting, as we alluded to, twisting from the, uh, the board. Again, they can't begin to twist on the board. Um, the incorrect head or feet entry, as we just talked about, or if they balk twice, uh, two point deductions again, uh, taking less of one step, meaning in other words, they just do it. Uh, uh, they do both feet into a hurdle or something like that. Uh, that's a problem. Uh, again, the balk where they start and stop, restart and so forth. Um, another balk is the takeoff from the hurdle uh, from both feet, as I just mentioned. Um, diver assuming incorrect starting position and is verbally corrected. Again, that's the balk that I just spoke of there. The four and a half point max, again, the arm position, as we mentioned, not going to matter during jumps. Illegal use of the tuck on those twisting dives. Again, those are dives that the, tw the twisting uh, or the uh, tuck position is not to be used. Um, again, diver doing a partial uh, into a, a, a position other than what's announced. Break in position. I think you all know enough about that. Um, and then the two point max referee call wrong position. Uh, no surprise there. They, it's going to be clear. It's going to be wrong position. Uh, divers does not make a sincere effort to come out of a tuck or a pike. That's another one where you have a problem where some of these divers, and I know a lot of you have seen this, where they're not getting enough height and they're trying to do either. A, I've seen it mostly when they're trying to throw a two and a half. And for some reason, you've got some of these kids, these divers that just don't get enough flight and they're trying to hit all these rotations because remember, they got to get everything done. But unfortunately, they're already falling and they're nearly making contact. And if they haven't come out of that pike or if they haven't come out of that tuck, that's where that referee ought to be calling that unsatisfactory. But if you see it and they don't call it, you know, in your mind, that's not a good dive and you shouldn't be given any more than a two point on that if they're, they're getting that close and they haven't come out of that pike or tuck. Um, half the two point deductions, you as a judge. Again, we talk about the knees on a tuck position, the excessive rocking on the board or feet leaving the board, the crow hopping. Now, one thing I want to point out about this, and I guess I can say I'm, I'm quite guilty of this. When I There's a difference between seeing some of these kids, um, the international divers or you know the national divers and so forth, the kids who, who, who know what they're doing, um, they're going to do a bit of crow hopping. You see a lot of it. Um, they're not supposed to be doing it, um, but they do do it. I've seen some kids, you can see them just slip a piece of paper under there. And then, then you've got some of these other kids, you know, you could probably put uh, the entire uh, encyclopedia, uh, encyclopedia of Britannica under there because they end up with like a ridiculous gap between the board and, you know, and they're coming up here and like, holy Moses. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of crow hopping there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that. Um, you should be calling that. But when it comes to the, uh, the, the more established divers, I kind of give them some leeway on that, although I probably shouldn't. Um, but I always say that as long as they're establishing that control, that if they're coming up and they're basically coming down to that same spot, I kind of leave that be, although you should be calling it, but I, I leave it alone. Um, but if they're coming down and they end up landing in a different spot on the board, that does become a safety issue. And you as a judge ought to be dinging them for that. So don't feel bad if you feel like you got to do that. I would, uh, uh, you know, it depends on the situation. Um, again, arm position, not correct. If they're going into the water and they're kind of like, you know, if they're going head first and their arms are apart, things like that, you should be looking for that. You can, you can ding them on entry, things like that, or they're doing feet first and their arms are kind of up there and not quite where they're above the head or above the shoulders, whatever, um, where it would just be a four and a half max. You can hit, hit for those. Um, and again, starting position here. If those kids don't establish that starting position, hit them. Um, take points for that. Um, judging the jumps here. Um, the, the front jump can be executed. They can either do a, a running approach to that or they can be standing on the end of the board, either one. But what you're, you're be looking for, regardless of that, they should be in a straight vertical line and there must be a press for that takeoff and the arms can be wherever the diver wants to have the arms. They could be up, they could be down or whatever, that's fine. Um, 
So this also can play into this too, because there is going to be a bit of a difference between whether they're doing a standing or a running jump. The one thing about the jump is that obviously this is, if you're really looking at the DD, that's the easiest uh, dive, if you will, that we have, the front or the back um, jumps. But I've seen jumps that have been done absolutely gorgeous. They've been perfect. There's nothing wrong if you see that perfect jump, throw a 10. There's nothing wrong with that. If you see an exceptional jump, do it. But if you see one you feel has been kind of sloppy or whatever, you scored accordingly. Um, I, I don't see it called enough. They seem like that. They feel like, well, it's a jump. It's really easy. It's not crystal perfect and pristine. And, you know, where maybe they're throwing up maybe a seven, maybe a seven and a half. And who knows? Maybe it ought to be a little bit more than that. But look at them and just you know, make sure it's, it's meeting your criteria. If they've met all that and it looks exceptional, it looks clean and very well done, don't be afraid to give them that high, sto uh, that high score, okay? Um, on both the standing the running jumps there, uh, during the flight through the air, the body must remain vertical. It should be remaining vertical. Um, they need to be going up more than they are out. Because again, they don't want to be going too far out when they're coming into the water. They should be in that three to four foot uh, spot uh, mostly uh, every time they do this. And the ones who are doing it right will do that. So hopefully it won't be any issues there, okay? And again, arm positions won't make any difference, okay? Um, back jump, again, that's going to be in the standing position. Back, same criteria there. The body ought to be straight, okay? Vertical line, um, and there has to be a press. They take off the flight. Again, they should be going upward, not going out. And keeping that straight position doesn't matter where the arms are. Okay. Um, lineups. Now, this is more for the referees, and I'll discuss this with the referees uh, in that session later. But again, the lineup, this, this has to do with the skill. And again, divers can use this in, in place of a, a front dive or a back dive. And this is the simple skill here is that. For the front lineup, they're standing on the end of the board. This is not a running approach or anything. They're standing on the end of the board, and they're simply – they some leagues call it a fall in. That's what it is. They're, they're falling in. There is no press. They're not giving any of that push. Okay, they fall, they're, they fall forward into the water. That's it. The arms are together. It should be up over the head. Um, and then for the back lineup, same thing. Um, they should be just falling back into the water. That's what it is. There is no press there. That's the difference between doing a lineup or a very, if they have a little push, they're not doing a lineup. They're doing a very bad dive. Not doing a whole lot of uh, uh, press on that. Um, you may run into that where some of these kids are throwing that on their sheet and their coach is saying they're going to do a, a dive and they end up not doing a dive. Well, that's where the referee will come in and change it. And it can change a sheet. That's the only time in this league where if a diver does the wrong dive that the, the referee can have a change where it does not get uh, called a failed dive. Um, again, uh, more of the summaries here, the judging scoring here, the referee call, illegal movement by the divers here. Um, you know, the false start we talked about, the two false starts, that's going to be a failed dive. Um, Bach of the divers not yet set. We talked about that. Um, Illegal takeoff in the hurdle from both feet. We talked about that break. Hands position incorrect. Oscillating on the board. Crow hops. We've 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 covered all that. Hopefully we're good. Um, let me just take a quick look here. I know. Um, so before I go on there, let me just say, um, I want to just take a quick peek at the questions here. Hopefully I'm going to get to all these. Um, Everybody all right? I guess everything yeah. is. Uh, Steve, I can tell you this one question if you want to. Um, yeah, go ahead. Throw it at me. I'm just trying to look for it. Yeah, I, I, I'm monitoring it right now. So okay, uh, oscillation, uh, mm -hmm. what is too much on a back dive? Like, what would you say in okay. terms of over oscillation? We don't have anything really set there. But in your mind, if you're seeing a diver that's going like three or four or beyond, that's getting to be too many. Because there are some kids that will sit there and oscillate like 10, 12, 15 times on the board. That's taking too much time. They need to be more sure of the dive they're doing. The very good divers, when they do that, if they start oscillating, they're, they're off the board in three oscillations, tops. 
But the younger kids, they're probably going to do a little bit more. So again, you can, you as a judge, you can decide if it's too many. But my rule of thumb is anywhere of three to five. If you're doing beyond that, you're probably doing too many. That makes sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, all the dies I'm, I'm talking about, yes, they're all in the handbook. They're on the website. Teresa, you have any other obvious questions? No, that's it. That was the only okay. questions. Let me go I... ahead and move on. Let me go ahead and move on here. Okay, so again, your complete dive. Okay, that's when the diver established that set position, right? That's the beginning of the dive once they establish that. And everything they do in between the four elements that make up the dive until the entire body is down below the surface of the water. That's a complete dive. You're not judging anything that they do below the water and so forth. That should be obvious, but that's what's making up what you're looking at, what you're judging. Okay. All right. So you're in the chairs, you've got all your, your things, you've got your, you got your scorecard. Everybody knows about them, them fun things. We'll talk a little bit about those coming in, but you're ready to go. Okay. So the dive is now announced. Right? What are we doing? Reminder, you got a picture in your mind. You got to focus on what's going on. You don't care who that diver is. You don't care about anything else. The only thing you care about is hearing exactly what that dive is. And reminder, when they announce the dive, you need to know what the dive number is. If the description is off for some reason, you know, in this league, the only thing that matters is that they make sure that they have a dive number and the position that the dive is doing. If they read off a description, it happens to be, you know, you know, Betty's best baked apple pie or something. It doesn't make any difference what's in the description. But the referee, because the referee may not necessarily be the one looking over those sheets, hopefully everybody else did, and make sure that the appropriate description is being done. But what's key on those dive sheets, what makes it legal is to make sure that you're hearing and it is written that you have the exact dive that you're looking for. OK, you listen for that. You as a judge, if you don't hear that dive, tell them, please repeat the dive or ask the referee to have the table, the announcer. Please read that dive again. Hopefully, as you get some announcers that go 100 miles an hour and you're not hearing the, the dive number, it also may be you know less than compelling. Uh, um, uh, announcer or the sound system could be any number of things, but you have to make sure that you understand what that dive is. So you can go ahead and put it in your mind with all four parts to consider what that perfect dive is going to look like. You want to make sure you do that. Okay. So you, now you're focused. Okay. The diver is ready to go. Okay. So here you go. We got a young lady here is going to do the 103 B. So I'd like to hear Real quick from everyone, I don't mind. I know we got 50 people here, but I want to hear from you. If you want to put it in the chat, just throw it in there and tell me what you think this score ought to be. Again, you're incorporating all four parts of this dive. You got the approach, you got the takeoff, flight. Everything should be all done up here. And then how nice is that entry? So here you go. She's doing a 103B. That's a forward one and a half somersault in a pike position. See what you think. Four and a half, five, six, four and a half, five and a half, <clears throat> whole bunch of them. But the point being is that, yeah, yeah there you go. That's probably a fair score considering what's going on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Way short. I agree. Um, there's a lot of things. There, there are some good things to that dive, but there's some other things that, that kind of, uh, you know, kind of, kind of hurt it. Okay. So again, once that dive's performed, now you're considering all four parts of your dive, right? All four, all four parts of that dive are being considered there, okay? So you ask yourself real quick, this all happens. You know? I'm sorry, is that me doing that? 
don't think I had that on there. Okay, something was echoing, sorry. So again, um, for all of you, did they meet the criteria? Okay, did they do, did they hit all four parts or some of them or all of them or whatever? Ask yourself that and you got to process, process that, process that very fast. Okay, and then when you're called to do so, you're going to go ahead and hold up your scorecard in a clear position so the announcer can read those scores and the table can record those, okay? Um, so again, just a reminder, the announcer is gonna read all the judges scores in the same chair order. The reason that's important is because you wanna know what that chair order is to make sure that the announcer doesn't get your score read incorrectly. That's important for you as a judge that they see what your score is and, and it gets recorded correctly, okay? Just make sure that the announcer gets that right. Again, there's your scorecards. Again, these fun things here, you know, mine's already kind of getting worn out and so forth, but this is actually fairly new. Um, haven't used it that much. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of them where the numbers are completely wore off, um, but that's where you got to get the Sharpie out and then put the numbers back on. And I'd like to throw it out there. What Doug always reminded folks when he was doing the judging clinic you want to get the numbers back on there, maybe use a little bit of scotch tape or some kind of packing tape that's going to keep the numbers sealed on there. But generally speaking, if you've been judging for a while, you know where those numbers are and you can flip through them quick enough and it shouldn't be an issue. OK, some other things will help you along as you're judging. OK, again, there's the handbook, but the full handbook's on the website. You should go ahead and get that loaded onto your phone, make sure you've got it or, or at home or whatever. Always good to reference that. And leading into the meets is always good to go ahead and at least skim through and just know where those things are. I'd like you to read through it and have a, a good understanding of what's there. But you should go back, skim through periodically, you know, on the heels of a meet, just kind of remind yourself. Um, the official worksheet here, this is on the website. All of you should get a copy of that. Um, nice to have. There's some other things that there are on the website, other tools. This one, the official worksheet, that really hasn't changed too much in the years, although we did update it in 2018, but it'll it'll lay out for you on, on one sheet what all the different calls are, okay? So getting into the do's and the don'ts and so forth, okay? Um, again, you want to be consistent with what you're doing. Use that entire scorecard. Don't be afraid to give that 10 or a zero or anywhere in between. It's your call. Nobody's going to sit here and, and give you all this grief. They, well, of course, your kids might. I mean, that, you know, you got to go home with, with your kids at some point. They might say, why did you give me that score? Well, you know, because that's what I saw. You know, that's, that's a simple answer. You just lay it on them. Um, so again, you're going to make mistakes. It's okay. It's going to happen. We all make mistakes. Don't dwell on it. You know, if you decide that when you're scoring, you're a little bit high, the important thing to do, and this again, the reminder important is that if you're a little high, keep your scoring consistent through the round. If you feel like you need to make that adjustment for the next round in that event, that's okay. You can adjust your take on things. If you feel like you've, you've kind of put your mid middle ground as more than a five or a six or whatever, Make your adjustments after the round. Be fair with the kids to make you know, the divers. Make sure that you're being consistent. That is part of being consistent. Being a little high doesn't mean you're not being consistent. It means you got to keep keep how your line of thinking, how you're judging, keep it on that even keel. In other words, of where you think you're you're you know where the numbers are for you, and and again, just do it by the round, and then move on from there. Okay. Um, some of the don'ts, the obvious, and you all know what I'm talking about here. Um, there are some folks that are sitting in the chairs and they're waiting to hear somebody else's score before they throw one up. And none of you should be shaking your head saying, no, I don't do that. Baloney, I know some of you have probably done it more than, more than you care to admit. Um, I've seen it, um, but that's okay. Um, you don't wanna do that. Um, you wanna keep your judging what you see as your own. Okay, it's your own score. Don't don't wait on somebody else. You should have enough confidence in yourself when you're scoring that you're going to go ahead. This is what I saw. This is what I'm putting up. You ever see me judging? A lot of times my eyes aren't even up. When I see that, I see the dive. 
I'm looking down, I'm processing in my head, and then I put that score up. And a lot of times my eyes don't even go back up until after the scores are read. That's because that's how I'm processing and that's what I'm satisfied with. And the other thing is don't do it. Don't do it early. Don't try to show up your fellow judges. There's no point in doing that. Don't show a score until you're asked to do it, please. You know, we want to be consistent. Okay. And also when you're scoring, you want to make sure that when you get to that point, this is another reminder, say, you know, we did a, okay, we're doing a five and a half. Okay. You're closing this. Keep your finger on that reminder. So you don't close that yet until you know we've moved on to the next dive because if they have to repeat that dive those scores i'm sorry when they have to repeat those scores you've got it you didn't forget you know because with me i can forget real quick what i put something up unless i put my finger on there and i remind myself so make sure you do that that's always a nice little tool to do okay um yeah doing that adjusting to other judges that's that's not going to do you any good it's not going to do these student athletes any good these divers they want you to call it like you see them just go with that and that other thing and i borrow that from doug and this is so true to sit there and some people are holding up that card i hope everybody can see that you're holding this up here you're doing this and they start reading scores here and they go seven six and a half six and a half and then people not looking all of a sudden you dropped it you're dropping a half you're trying to bring your score up you're not supposed to be doing that, okay? Stick with that five. That's what you called. Stay with it. It's not a problem, okay? That is why we have, for the most part, well, we usually have five judges in the chairs. You're not all going to see the exact same thing. Sometimes the bingos happen, and many times they don't. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I've had my bad days, and I'm not ashamed of it. It just happens. You know, I just don't want it to be consistently bad. You know, that means I need to reflect and look back and see what I need to do to correct myself. So that sort of stuff. Okay. So here we are, the wonderful distractions here. I always, I always love to talk about these things here. And the big culprit is your cell phones. And this is where I say, damn the technology, because everybody's got them. I think if the kids had a way to bring them into the pools with them, they'll do it. They like to have their phone with them most all the time. And we as parents are worse. What I would tell you as, as judges, you really need to put those things away and not just saying putting them away. Um, also, if you feel like you're somebody who has, is on call or something like that, you probably don't need to be in the chair or you need to make arrangements to make sure that Somebody else will take that call for you away from what you're doing. I say that for the referees, the judges, anybody, and even those people working the table. They don't need to have all that stuff. That is a big distraction, okay? You know, we kid around here with this, this little cartoon here, but, yeah, unfortunately, I've seen it happen where people are looking at their phones when they're supposed to be watching a dive. It happens. It's a big no-no. You're doing a big disservice if you don't put those phones away, that's just one of the many distractions. You know, you're not working in a bubble. I put it right there, and that's so true. You've got all those folks around you. You've got screaming kids. You've got parents talking. You've got this and that. You know, back in the days when I was at Ashton, we had judges lined up against a fence, and right behind us, we had about 50 people talking with all these different opinions and all that. And that was kind of tough because we're trying to hear, and I made sure there were speakers set up so the judges can hear it in all different directions. But there's always going to be somebody behind you talking about this and that. And when the dive goes off, there's a big cheers or this or that or whatever it may be. Okay. You got to have to keep yourself focused and keep yourself in line and looking at the dive. You're not looking at the diver, you're looking at the dive. You want to know what that dive is from the beginning to the end. That's all you're focused on. You got to channel, do your best to channel all that out, okay? The biases that are there, yeah, there are some who will go in and say, yeah, I've seen this kid, I'm expecting him to do that, okay? I've seen that kid or whatever it may be, or this team, you know, kind of does this or that or whatever. There are things you're going to be doing that you just simply have to put aside. 
I cannot emphasize enough that when it comes to judging, the only focus you have is that dive at that moment, that very moment when that dive is happening. Nothing else matters. You don't care who the diver is. It could be your own kid on the board. It should not matter. It doesn't matter what you expect a diver to do. This is a different dive. This is a different moment. It could be a different day. It is that dive, that moment, doesn't matter who it is. You focus on that dive and you're worried about those four elements that are making up that dive. That's what you're looking at. That's all you care about, okay? I mentioned about the coaches in here. I mentioned them in the beginning, what their jobs are. But unfortunately, we do have some coaches that may not like your call. And for some reason, that seems to influence judges more than a parent doing it. You know, sometimes they feel like the, the, the coaches must know something more than, than the parents. Well, that's unfortunate because really, when it comes down to it, those coaches need to be doing their jobs, focusing on the kids. It's not doing any service by bickering or complaining or whatever. You know, if there is something technically called incorrect, and that has to do more of the referee, not a judge, nobody is going to question your calls. You call it like you see it, and that's it. Okay. So I've got a I've got a round of uh, dives that I would um, like to show everyone if we're doing on time. Okay. All right, so we're at we're about 815. I talked a little bit long, but what I want to do is take a few moments and run through the dives. I want to make sure I open this up. And I don't I don't mind at this point. If you want to go ahead and open up the audio, I don't mind you shouting out the scores. Let's go ahead and run through a few of these. And then uh, you, we'll we'll be we'll be wrapped up. OK, so this young man's going to be doing the 103 B forward one and a half somersault pipe. OK, remember all four parts of the dive. See, see what you think. Okay, what's the scores? Eight. Okay. Eight. Mm -hmm. seven. And a half. Yeah, I see a bunch of scores, seven, seven and a half, things like that. That's fine. You can put it in the chat or shout it out. I don't care either way. Yeah, I would say when we were there, um, he, he, he probably scored somewhere to the seven, seven and a half, but um, I don't know if that's, that's probably what I would give it. That looks good. Here's another one. Here's another one doing the same dive. Lay it on me. Sixes. Okay. Six. Six and a half. Uh huh. Four and a half. I saw there. Okay. The one who had four and a half. But any, any, you want to, any, care to share why? Yes, no, maybe. Because we got a good range of scores, and that's that's good. But I'm curious to know what is it that you're seeing there. Sorry, sorry, I was muted. Okay. Um, I thought he was pretty far out from the okay. board, and um, and also I thought it, it, he didn't go in straight. So combination okay. of both. So well, let's pull this back a little bit and just take a quick look here. Okay, so. Okay, looks like everything led up to that. Looks like it's fine. He's on the end of the board. He's got his takeoff. But yeah, he's kind of shooting out quite a bit. And he's, yeah, he's already, he's contact here. Um, I guess one could say he is straight. Um, but he's not vertical. <laughs> um, straight, one thing, being completely vertical. But this all has to do with the fact that he's a little bit further out from the board then probably he should be. So again, these are fair calls that you're making. So no, no problem there. Okay. Okay. So here's again, there's the same dive here. I want to just show this uh, with the girl's side here. Okay. Like, and we'll see what she's doing with the same exact dive. And again, throw it out there. You can shout it out, put it in the chat, whatever works for you. Seven and a half. Yep. Yep. 
I couldn't see the entry, but it looked like a seven and a half or an eight. Well, I can tell you her entry was pretty, you know, right in the spot, that three, the four foot mark. And she looked like she was pretty vertical with that. Um, yeah, so yeah, seven, seven and a half. That, that's, that's a fair call there. Pretty consistent calls. Good job. Okay. If there's a question, hold on. There's a question that do you deduct for dipping the board in the water? I'm sorry? There's a question in the chat. It okay. said, do you deduct for dipping the board in the water? Dipping the board into the water? That's, that's the question. I don't, I, 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 think, I, I don't think that physics no. can happen. <laughs> dipping the board into the water? Yeah, we I've never seen it dozens. happen. I've never seen it happen, so I don't know. No. The answer. You know what? For I, I tell you right now, it ain't happening in our league. We do have a diver in our on our team that does that, and he's just really tall, and he dips it every time. But I would never deduct for it. When you say dip, you mean making contact with the water? Yeah, the edge of the board goes into the water. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's a rarity. Um, no, we don't have any provision for that. Um, that means he must be shooting off like a rocket. But then again, um, yeah, that that helps to get him good height. That's fine. But we don't have any criteria saying that. Um, not that I'm aware of. That just means he, he's able to work to ride that board and work it really well. Um, okay, so let's let's move on. I know I know somebody here probably uh, might maybe recognize this one. Um, so there's a 103C. See some of these kids, some of the parents know who they are, but I won't shout out names. Okay, what do you think? Nine. Eight and a half. Eight. Eight and a half. I said nine. <clears throat> I'm just peeking to see if mom even throws up a score. Yes, she did. Yeah, I knew you. I, I figured you would. <laughs> yeah, you didn't think I was wasn't watching. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good dive. That was pretty clean. All the criteria met pretty well. Good height, good entry, nice and straight, pretty clean. Was it perfect? No, that's but that's okay. That was a that was a a really good dive. Very good dive. Okay. Let me just run a couple more here. Again, I don't want to hold you all too long here. Um, here's another one doing the same dive, the 103C. And you see what you think of this one. Now look, look for look for all the parts here. Okay, what'd you all see? No toe point. Knees bend. Yeah, four, four and a half. That's that's fair. One of the things here also, looking back on this, okay, where he's at with this, he's coming off the board. Now, it doesn't look like he's shooting himself out too much. Um, and the height isn't so much a problem, but it's it gets a little messy here. And you notice on that contact, his feet aren't pointed, his feet are apart, and he's kind of twisted a bit. So at least in this competition here, that's you're going to see a bunch of that in our league. You're going to see a lot of that. Um, you know, incorporated, he met all the criteria here. Um, that hurdle off of one foot coming down on both feet. He met that is on the end of the board. It's just some of the other stuff here that fell apart. So your score is four or four and a half or five are fair. I apologize for the puppy barking his head off in the, in the background there. Um, let me see if I can get, a. um, I mean, I've got a lot of dives you can look at. Here's a 105C. Okay. What'd you think? Five and a half. Too short, maybe. Short and low. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see the scores. Yeah, that's, you know, somewhere in the five, maybe uh, six, six and a half range. Those are fair scores. Those are good calls. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me get a couple more here. Um, I will go ahead and throw that one here. That's the same dive. This is a 105C. That was the same dive. Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit improved from the other one. Yeah. Good scores. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about right. Good. Let's look at this one. Okay. Young lady's going to do the same dive here. So again, this stuff happens quick, right? 
We're going through, we're, we're making sure. Now, what'd you see? That happened quick. Five. Five, Five four. Silver tongue, Robert. One thing Her. to point out here on that entry, looking back here, where she's at here, you can kind of see where she's just still got the body kind of not straightened out. Mm -hmm. She's already contacted the water right there. And you can see where she's at, where she's just coming out of that. So she didn't straighten up. So taking points off for that, that's a good call. Excellent. Okay. There's a back dive. Young man's going to do uh, a 201 back dive pike. Okay, that, that one's probably a little hard to see, but care to score it? Six. Five and a half. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Five and a half, six. Six and a half. Yeah, that that's that's what it was. Okay. Um, here's another young man. He's doing that same one. But he's gonna do this. This is the pike. Okay. Wow. Seven. Seven and a half. half. Now, somebody just said, wow, there's your wow factor. We haven't talked about that. You know, when you start hearing the fans and everybody else saying, wow, that was really good. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear what's going on in your mind. What do you see? Okay. The scores I see, they're very <laughs> consistent and they're very much in line with, with what I would see. Uh, but again, they're your calls and uh, I concur. Well, I'm always going to concur with your calls and how about that, you know, but yeah, they are good, consistent calls. That was, that's very good. Okay. Now here's the tricky ones. I want to show you real quick uh, before we get out of here and I'll show you a couple of the twisters um, when they're doing these, these back, uh, not the back dive, but a straight position. Look for this and what's involved here. 202 a. Okay, what do you think? Got a four, got a seven, got a six, you got a five. Yeah, we're all over the place here. A six and a half. Mm -hmm. Here's the one thing that, that may catch the eye of a lot of folks on that entry is where is she at? Okay, there she's making that contact. She's right there. Okay, she's, she's not quite vertical but she is straight. Um, you know, is it perfect? She's got a good location next to the board also. That's something to consider as well. Okay. But yeah, in truth, she's kind of not needs a little more height to get all that business done. But she's about contacted right there. That's not too bad. Um, not super great. You know, not even great for that matter, but you get the idea. Okay. Let's look at another one. Here's another uh, young lady doing a 202 back, back dive straight. She's doing the exact same dive. What do you think? Just a little over. Five. Okay. Five and a half. I saw a three and a half. I saw a six, five and a half. Yeah, she was out a little bit. Um, she certainly met all the criteria. Um, again, probably could have stood to have a little bit more height. Um, let me run forward here. I want to get to a couple of the twisters and I can let you all be. I know there's a whole lot of these other ones, but we can, you know, I, I can share with you. Uh, but I wanted to just go ahead and make sure I hit some of these other twisting ones. Uh, well, let's look at the inward. Here's an inward dive pike. Um, Scores. Seven and a half. Seven yeah. and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Six and a half. That's fair. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the, that was pretty clean. Um, you tweak a little bit. He's good, good landing spot, not too far from the board. It's actually right there at the sweet spot. Toes were pointed. The legs were straight. That looked really good. Um, Here's another young lady who's doing this same. 
She's doing this inward pike as well. Eight and a half. Eight and a half, nine. Eight and a half, eight and a half. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was a very clean dive uh, in, in a lot of respects. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty clean. It did very well. Um, let me do one more. I'm going to do one more dive. I want to get one more twister in here and we'll, we'll call it done. I want to show you this one because I want, to, I want you to see what's going on here. This last dive for you. Okay. A forward somersault and a half twist. See what happens. Just want to show you this last one. <laughs> Go ahead and score it. Yeah, that's a low, that's a low ball. Because right there, you know, he's coming in here just to finish it off there. He was having his issues because look where he's at when he hits. That's not good at all. That's a bad one. Okay. Um, that's pretty much what I got. I've got other dives here, but hey, you all did great. Um, congratulations. Good job. Um, I, I apologize for holding you all here a little longer uh, than I should have a few minutes after, um, but you all did great. Um, So thank you all for being here. You guys are you're all good for this season, next season, and that one thereafter. You're good for the next three seasons. Again, thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. If you're here for the referee portion, please stay on. Thank you. We'll get that going here in just a few moments. Steve, that was great. Thank you thank so you. much. I hope you all uh, enjoyed it. All have good luck this season. Um, have questions on rules be sure to reach out to the board they'll be able to answer whatever questions you have thank you thanks for being thank here you. folks thanks do i stay on for the ref one yes okay yeah anybody can stay on for the ref i'm happy with that steve that was so well done and every time i watch you i learn that much more well, I hope so. I, 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 you know, I, that's why I, I want to help you guys out with this. I, I hope it's worthwhile. Well, it's funny because when I'd watch Wes's, the things I got most out of was an active coach gets active, you know, participants, active divers, mm -hmm. a coach who sits behind a chair and just kind of talks to people, doesn't get much out of them. Mm -hmm. And yours is very much about it is you making your decision based on what you see and it's subjective yep as much as you want to believe it's objective it's your decision oh. and yours is equals anybody else's absolutely it's very important the judges yeah you're working as a team you're in cooperation with other judges that are there but when it comes down to you know brass tacks and right there it's you seeing that dive, not the diver, that dive, that very moment in time. If you're seeing a dive, that's all that matters because you owe it to the student athlete to make sure that you do that. You're doing your job. Everything else will take care of itself. Just so everybody knows this next portion is for referees um, certification. We will use what is in this participant side of it. Uh, screenshot that at the end, which will be who is certified. Those who drop off after the next 15 minutes will not be a part of that. So again, we'll take who is still a participant uh, via video and audio at the end. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dave, you let me know when you're ready to start. Make sure. Thanks, Steve. I figure let's give two more minutes. Sure. That's fine. Almost 35 after, and then we'll get going. We've got yeah. 27 participants. Okay. Making sure I've got the correct version up here. <laughs> and can hopefully just, the dog will not knock everything over. Can I ask a quick question? Did you say that, that people's cameras had to be on in order to be certified? 
No, 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 no. Just meaning that uh, people have called in. We want to see your happy faces. Come on. What is it? <laughs> no, you, you don't so have to have happy. your... It, it, you don't it, have to have your camera on to be certified, but we do want to make sure that people are watching the slides as well as listening to the audio, not reading books or, you know, being set. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I didn't have mine on for the last hour and a half and I wanted to make sure. Okay. I just want to be sure I'm not putting anybody to sleep. <laughs> now you're doing good, Steve. Thank you so much. Tracy, you're all good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, this, it's, 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 it's fun to do. It's fun to be part of it. Absolutely. Does anybody know where the video is for the coaches, the, the recorded one? Is hey, that... does. <laughs> so um, we will post those in the next week or so. We just have to find the proper place to put it so that people can access it. Okay. So it'll be up in time. We've got kids coaching that haven't seen it yet. That would be helpful before. Surely the essence of his whole coaching was, if I could, one, if there's issues on deck, it's your parent, it's the rep to worry about. Second is that an active coach. Wes really, for the most part, had junior coaches on it, for the most part. And it was very much encouraging them that if you're an active coach, meaning really involved and really encouraging, you'll have a very encouraging team. If you don't, and you're talk the coaches are talking amongst each other and they're not involved, you're not gonna have a very involved team. So there's obviously more to it and he goes through more, but to me, as I've encouraged reps to have their coaches watch it, or sorry, do his trainings, is it's a lot about coaching 101 and how to encourage without discouraging but we'll get it out there in time can I, can I ask you this is maybe a controversial question but are they instructed to understand the distinction between an active coach and a coach that's trying to work the officials because i've had situations where the coaches are constantly trying to emphasize what they think they want the judges to most see it'd be like a train wreck of a dive and they go great entry because it will be the one element of the dive that they will have seen so are they and i have reason to believe since i've done this for a while that some of these coaches know exactly what they're doing they're not necessarily encouraging their kids they're trying to influence the judges um i i honestly don't think that wes was covering that in his training uh the two that i watched or participated do you have a comment on that uh, well, Steve, Steve, why don't you end it? Well, with that? well as I as I mentioned in the judging training, you're going to get some of those coaches right. that are going to express their opinions in certain ways in a not so direct way uh, by saying things and shouting out this and that. Okay, yeah. so but as a referee, my question has been because I've never I've never done this, you know, in a couple of cases because I was afraid I would get hit. Is is that you know? Is it within your purview to say, "Could you please be quiet, quiet, Charlie?" I, I think so. Here, here's the thing you got to keep in mind. And now that you have the referees uh, in here, I'll say from the get go, um, you being the referee, uh, you're in charge of that meet. You're you're the head official. Okay. You're in charge of all the other officials. That means you're in charge of those working the table, the announcer, all those. Um, certainly you're not in charge of um, so much of the coaches. The coaches need to focus on their jobs. One of the things you can do in pre-meet duties, you can have a meeting with the coaches if you wish, um, and you can point out what your expectations are. And you very politely say to them, look, my focus is to make sure that my judging panel is able to do their job without interference or influence by any outside source. Your focus is to concentrate on your kids, your coaching, your kids, because remember, they're just like, in a lot of ways, they're, they're like infants. They hear, they see everything, and they may emulate everything you're doing. Now, if a coach is trying to pull some shenanigans and trying to influence things, they're not doing their job. 
They're supposed to be doing their job by teaching and, uh, and fostering uh, the goodwill of the sport of diving. They have a job to teach them the skill, whether they do it well or they don't do it well. If they don't do it well, they need to take whatever steps are necessary to correct that with the diver, not try to get brownie points or extra points or influence points from the officials. They're not learning anything if they're doing that. So that may be one of those things that won't hurt to point out to a, the coaches. And if it, if it gets to a point where you have to stop the meet, if you feel like they are becoming a distraction, you can do it. If you need to pull the coach aside and you don't need to do it in front of everyone, you can simply very quietly go off to a corner and say, look, let's stick to your job. Worry about your kids. Okay. Don't, don't try to influence a judging panel. Because again, you as a referee, and you may be one of the judges there, whatever you throw, whatever your scores are, that's it. Might be a little bit different for you as a referee, only if there is a, a call that you make is maybe applied incorrectly. But the reason you're here is to make sure those things don't happen. Okay? This is not an ego trip for you all. This isn't like to make you the, you know, the, the ultimate uh, – you know, answer to it all, because we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Let me go ahead and get into the, does that answer your question? Yeah. It's kind of a, it's still kind of a gray area there, I, but I just, yeah, I mean, I, and I mean, I'm not, I really am not trying to have a power grab because um, he, he, even having gone through this a bunch of times, I'm yeah. still astounded, like, wow, something just happened. We never talked about it. I have no idea, you know, what to do. And, you know, and so, and then I've had experience with those coaches. Then you decide what to do. You try to sort of say, well, I guess we'll do this. And one of the coaches doesn't like it. And I, you know, I've had that ex kind of experience. Just like, well, I don't know. I'm looking at the rules and it doesn't really tell me what to do. So this is what I think is the, you know, sense of the rule and we'll do it this way. Rule of thumb is that, sort of you, know, distra uh, you know, requests to have, you know, uh, redive or do a, re redo a dive or something like that. I've had some interesting conversations with coaches about that. Mm -hmm. Man. Again, yeah. establish, establish what your expectations are with your judging panel. And if you feel like you need to do that with uh, the coaches, go ahead and do that. Try to get all that done before the meet starts and we go from there. Mm -hmm. But if there are disruptions, you got to do what you got to do and just make sure you get them corrected. Because right. uh, we're there for the kids. We're not there for, for the adults. We're not there for the coaches. We're there for the kids. That's the ultimate. Okay, let me get this thing underway because I realize we're already at the uh, at 20 of here. Um, so I just want to run through this um, real quick. Let me go ahead and share this. Okay. Okay, this is the referee portion. Um, I know a lot of you are getting recertified, but perhaps we've got some new referees here. Uh, we'll try to keep it uh, simple and direct and so forth. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and put those into the chat. And we'll try to get all those answered for you as we go along. Um, but hopefully we can get through the material here real quick. Um, and we'll, we'll just take it from there. Oh, I think I just kicked myself out of that one. That's not good. Anyways. Um, okay. It's done here. Okay, this is the referee portion. Okay, so your qualifications as a referee, uh, for those who are new, um, uh, we've got an outline here. We, we'll talk about your qualifications, what your responsibilities are here. Um, you do have pre-meet duties and, and uh, things take care of during the meet and after the meet. There are a few other items we're going to talk about, and then we'll do an open book. You can't possibly fail um, Little, little quiz. I shortened it down a little bit from the one I put together um, last week just because I didn't want to. I got barked at because there were a couple of questions in there. They said, well, that's more administrative and this and that, whatever. Anyway, so we'll move on here. Okay, so um, what you need, your qualifications here, 19 years of age by June 1st. Um, 
The one thing I, I realized I didn't mention to the judges, we need to make sure we emphasize, and you need to emphasize this to all the judges. We're allowing the 19 year olds to participate this year. So you as a referees, when you're out there, I realize what they've got written on the website, what they're talking about is how to deal with the 19 year olds. They're actually wording it to say that going into it, the 19 year olds are gonna be listed as exhibition divers. I'm not comfortable with that because reading on further, they're indicating that if it comes down to a tie and a dual meet, then you can incorporate the 19 year old divers. Here's a rule of thumb and tell all of the judges this and you can remind yourself of this, no matter who is diving, it doesn't matter if they're exhibition or not. And it's especially important for these 19 year olds. Do not judge them like they're exhibition. Do not let your judges judge them like they're exhibition. Very important. Because as long as you keep them on that same uh, judging criteria that it should be and not getting that, you know, the, uh, the unconscious bias, if you will, maybe even a conscious bias, to make sure that the judges will score that dive exactly as they see it. Because even on paper, if they try to say it's exhibition and then it has to be done, you know, there is something not quite settling, calling somebody an exhibition diver and then turn them into, uh, you know, a criteria uh, that I have a competing set of dives. It's usually the other way around. If a kid has gone through and failed dives and then they end up being exhibition status to finish the balance of their dives. But in this case, emphasize, make sure that they're all being judged exactly as they should be doing it. That's what judges should be doing anyways, okay? Uh, moving on, you're recertified every three years. You all should be looking in the rule book. You got to know, um, you got to know all the stuff there in pages six through 37. You should at the very least know where to find it. I suggest that you do go through and you read it and you have a good understanding. I'm not expecting you to know every single word. That's not necessary. You just need to know where to find stuff in the book. Hopefully everybody's okay with that. Okay. Um, again, you as a referee, you are the head official for the meet. Okay. It doesn't mean you're, you know, you're running the whole pool. You're only in charge of the meet. You're the head official. Okay. Um, set your mind to be impartial throughout the meet, even when it's your own kid or your best, you know, your neighbor's kid or whatever, your good friends, whatever, doesn't matter. Your job is just to be the official at that particular time. We're ignoring the fact that we might know the diver and you know, when it comes to them doing the dives, okay, your pre-meet duties, okay, real important. We just touched on that a little bit before this, um, it's important you communicate. You need to communicate what your expectations are. Um, you want to make sure you're giving those instructions to the judges, um, especially how you are going to be making your calls. If you're going to have to call a balk, are you going to like say you're raising your hand, you're going to be verbal to the judges and to the table and declare whatever call you're going to make. But you need to let everybody know how you're going to do that. It's very important. Go ahead and answer whatever questions that that, uh, that they have questions on rules. Please do it. Okay. Make sure you convey all your expectations, as I mentioned. It, it is very key to making sure that your meet is going to go in a smooth, orderly fashion. Okay. Again, indicate your signals, whether it's verbal or whatever. You know, make sure you're doing that in your pre-mute uh, discussion. Um, you know, go over what all the different uh what the infractions are and so forth remind the judges of all four parts of the dive make sure that they have an understanding they should be referencing hopefully everybody does their homework doesn't happen all the time but you give them friendly reminders going through it i'm sure your first pre-meet duty for the first meet of the season might be a little bit lengthy but as you move along it's okay you can kind of change the theme of that and just kind of run through things okay um you can determine, be a good idea to determine who are, who are actually diving, competing for team points and who the exhibition divers are. You don't want to have the announcers going announcing who they are, but it kind of helps to go ahead and have exhibition divers, especially those little ones, and just have them kind of go first because it, exhibition usually means they don't have enough dives. 
But if they do, sometimes they just do dives where they're repeating them. Um, so you get an idea as, as the events are coming through um, as, as to who are the exhibition divers. So there aren't any like surprises because you don't want to have things stop and say, hey, you know, why is he doing this dive again? Or if it's out of order from the normal uh, course of the required dives as opposed to the optional dives, okay? So the, the last thing on here, this is you as, a, you as a referee, as a courtesy, you could be the one looking through the sheets. You can help with that. But unlike high school or any of the others where the, the referee is required to look over their sheets, you don't have to do that. That's actually the job of the reps or whoever it may be to make sure that those sheets are right. But when it comes down to it, um, if the dives are all on there uh, and, and they're correct, and the diver signs a sheet, the coach signs a sheet, we're good to go. That's the official entry. They can put that in. And um, the problems come up and you deal with them accordingly, okay? During the meet, you want to make sure you're right there, the closest seat to the table, because you're going to be working with that meet secretary to resolve any issues that may be coming up. Um, just got to be able to be in a position to act um, so they can go right to you. Um, and again, you're working with and you are going to support. You're going to have the backs of all your judges. Whatever scores they throws, don't give them the grunt or the stink eye or any of that. And don't let anybody else do it. You must have the backs of your judges at all times, no matter what. The only problem you have is if you have a judge that does get out of line or something like that. I will tell you, I haven't had it happen. And I hope we never see it in this league. You know, this is a developmental league. We're just getting the kids along. And yes, there's going to be some good ones there. But you usually don't have a problem with your judging panel. They're usually very cooperative. They're, they're just there to do their job. Okay. Um, also, during the meet, you got to, your job is to recognize those technical violations. Okay. My idea of having a great meet is that I'll have a pre-meet duty. I'll discuss with the, uh, the judges what my expectations are. And then we go in there. You always hope for, as a referee, that you don't have to call any infractions. You're always hoping that you're always wishing that the diver will go ahead and meet all the criteria and leave the judging to the judges. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about imposing anything. But when you see those violations, you got to make those appropriate calls. You got to be firm with those and stick with them. Okay. Um, the correction of errors on the dive sheets. Certainly, if you have a dive sheet that has dives that are written out of order, you got to have all of the required dives in the correct order. Optional dives can be listed any way they want. But however way the divers actually listed them is how they're supposed to be performing those. Everybody understand that. You could have a situation where they turn in a dive sheet. Here's another unique situation. If all of the legal dives are on the sheet and somehow or another the coach has them written in the wrong order, if they're on the sheet, it's okay. You as a referee, however, if they, if they haven't performed any of the dives, or even if they perform, say, the one, the first dive, it's going to either the front dive or a front lineup, and they do that dive, and then it's recognized the other ones are out of order. You as a referee can go ahead and change that sheet to make sure, because the dives are already on the sheet, you can correct the order. But if the diver goes up there and performs the incorrect dive in the wrong order, especially those, well, a required dive, that's where you have a problem. Because if they went up there and... You know, they started out and they did a front dive and then they go back up there and they lose their head and they go up there and they just go ahead and do another front dive and they're supposed to do a back dive. Okay. Well, they've done the wrong dive. They did the wrong dive. Okay. Sometimes it's happened where they just flat out do the wrong one. The complexity runs into, we get to the older kids where they've got, they got a front dive, they got a back dive or a lineup. And then for the um, 15 and 18s are supposed to be doing their inward as their third dive and they screw up and do one of their optional dives as their third dive well the problem is if you catch that after they go off the board that third dive which is supposed to be their inward has now failed the dive that they did perform which could have been the fourth one on the sheet they get to do that dive again it's in the fourth position but they failed that third dive because they didn't do the inward 
It's those complexities. You look for what happens. Correction of errors either before they do the dive or after they do the dive. Okay. Um, your calls versus judges' calls. Again, these are in the rules book here, page 21 and 22. Um, you know what all the zero uh, or fail dies. Uh, you're giving assistance while they're doing the dive. That's no good. If they did the wrong dive, if they refuse to do a dive uh, on the twist, if they're over and under twisting, things like that, they cannot twist off the board. That's a failed dive right from the get-go. Box, if they do two of them, that's a failed dive. You stop them and they go from there. Um, and then the other thing is if they're trying to do a dive, that's not listed on our table. And again, we've got those sheets there that list all the dives. I recommend that you get that off the website when they post it and just go through that. So you'll know, you'll get an idea. Use a referee. I like to keep that thing with me because I may not necessarily look at those sheets, but I'm going to go down and scroll down and say, yeah, that's the right dive. Is that the right DD? Yeah. Okay. We're good. Go. If you see something wrong and you might hear them do the wrong DD, that's when you say, hold on, you need to correct the DD and, and do that. That's fine. That can happen. Okay, that's where you can do some correction there. Uh, Two-point deduction calls, that's the box, the illegal start, uh, the problem with the takeoff. Um, if you're doing hurdle from both feet, again, what I mentioned in the judging portion there, there are two different types of approaches that we see in this league. There's a three, four, five-step hurdle approach. That's what most of the kids who are learning how to dive are doing. Um, either that or they're doing standing on the end of the board, which is fine. But then there's also the other approach, which is a three, four, five step uh, hop to hurdle. And that's okay. You see a lot of that with the older divers who are, who are more seasoned divers, the, you know, if you will. Um, those who, you know, like USA divers, things like that, uh, they learn that after they do that, that standard approach, and that's okay. Um, nothing wrong with that, uh, you know, the hop hurdle, okay? Um, the, the four and a half point max calls, illegal use of the tuck, and certain twisting dives, we have that listed in the book. Um, you should look over the table of dives. You can see where the matching is that not all the twisting dives are free position. Again, you're gonna have ones that allow just the, the pike or the tuck position on some of those twisting dives, but you look for those that are, uh, that are a problem. Um, and also your, your four and a half point max, again, that's a deficient uh, dive. Um, the arms are above the head on a feet first entry. They, they actually shouldn't be out, but the criteria is if they're like level at the shoulder or just maybe just below the shoulder, they still have met the criteria. It's not a four and a half point max, but the judges should be dinging because those arms are definitely not in the right position. And if they get up here, they're definitely in the wrong position. And you can instruct your judges, say it's a deficient dive. You can give no more than four and a half. They can give anywhere from zero to four and a half. It's up to them. Um, if they were intending to give them more, you tell them you're capped at four and a half. That's where the infraction where you're imposing that. Two point max. They're doing a clearly a wrong position. You got to make sure they're, it's very clear that if they're doing a straight, if they're called to do a straight and they flat out pike and they're breaking it all the way down to here, that's not a break. They're in the wrong position. You look for that. Okay. And then you've got some other kids that flat out lose their heads. If they've gone up and they're supposed to be doing a pike and somehow or another, they end up doing a tuck or something, something that's clearly in the wrong position. You want to make sure that you um, you hit them for that. Real important. You that's that's your job is to look at that. Um, um, calling the box, okay. You're not calling going to call the box when it happens. You're going to call that box after they perform the dive. That also means if they do a false start and they reset and they go ahead and perform the dive because you haven't yet evaluated whether the diver has balked or they failed to dive because if they balked twice, they failed. But you want to make sure that when you call a balk, you make sure you call that after the dive is performed. You can put your hand up and say, I'm declaring a balk. Judges, please score exactly. Well, you don't have to say exact. George, uh, judges, please score the dive as you see it. They'll hold up their scores, four and a half. Judge, uh, the announcer, will, you instruct the announcer to take two points off of each, which now makes that four and a half a two and a half. And again, if somebody has a one and a half score, the 
the, the, the announcer is going to call to zero. Nobody gets a negative score here. That does not happen here. Okay. Uh, zero is rock bottom. That's it. There are no negative scores. We don't operate that way. Okay. Um, the false starts again, that's a set start, stop, reset and start again. Um, that's, that, that's your balk there. Um, I talked about this a uh, little bit with the judges there and, I, and mentioned this here. Once they've set in their position, whether they're on the end of the board uh, or you know, back ready to do a running uh, approach, once they've set and the coach or somebody assists them by saying, hey, you're in the wrong position or something like that, and then they correct that, that's technically a false start right there because they have to reset to the correct position. So there – that does fall into that category of set, um, but they didn't start, but they have to reset. So that is a balk and that you as a referee need to make that call. Okay. Um, so that's when you call it again, you're going to do that after uh, the diver has performed the dive. Okay. If they do one less, if they do less than a step before they do a hurdle, in other words, they're standing there and they start bunny hopping. That's no good. Okay. That's a balk itself. Okay. If they bunny hop you a hurdle and then go to the end of the board, they're gone. Um, you know, they balk, but they still perform the dive, then they're fine. Um, it becomes a safety issue there. Um, lineups. The one thing I want to point out about the lineups for you as a referee, um, I, I've told this the same thing, you know, the last couple of years that we were doing these sessions that <clears throat> we don't want to get too hung up about the difference between a lineup and what an actual dive is because this whole thing about bringing lineups in was, was born more on the fact that uh, folks were getting bent out of shape about the fact that certain divers, especially young ones were just getting on the end of the board and they were doing this minimal push to, to do a front dive. And we were still having judges fair to say, maybe not seasoned judges that were giving where they're not giving any kind of push to go off on a standing, a standing approach, they're not getting any height, and people were throwing up fours, fives, things like that, where it really was more like a lineup. So for your, for you as a referees, what you need to know, the lineup is just that, okay? And you're you you're defining part of that. Do you see any kind of push? Okay, that lineup is very simple. All they're doing is that they're standing on the end of the board. There is no running approach on this, whether it's front or back. They're standing on the end of the board and they're simply falling in. That is the skill that they're learning is to fall in, fall forward or fall back. That's what the lineup's going to be. You may end up having a coach who has decided to go ahead and list it as a front dive because the DD is going to be a 1.6 or a 1.3 for a front dive and a 1.6 for a back dive where the lineup, the DD is only a 1.0. And they're trying to work and try to get that. Um, and you see that on that front lineup that they had no push, that they just fell in. This is where you as a referee can come in. If you see that it's a lineup, you simply say, I'm declaring diver performed a lineup. You instruct the judges, score it, score it as a lineup. Okay, which shouldn't change anything because a lineup is just that. Okay, but then we'll instruct the table and tell the meet secretary, please change the dive sheet to a lineup, and that will change the DD. In this case here, this is the only time that you can change the dive to a different dive number, and the diver does not fail the dive. Okay, this is the only time we allow this to happen, where they're saying they're doing uh, either a front dive, back dive, and they don't do it, they do a lineup. You as a referee can make that call to change the sheet. Is everybody good with that? I realize I talked a little more than I was planning on with that, but hopefully everybody understands that. Again, don't get too hung up on it. Just understand what that difference is. If you need to make that call, go ahead and do it, okay? And does that does that go both ways? Is so you can, if they do push, you turn it from a lineup into a no, front dive? No, good, good, good question. If they list it as a lineup, it stays as a, as a lineup. And you need to stress that to the judges because they need to, to judge the fact that that lineup 
really wasn't performed correctly because they're not doing the skill correctly. If they're doing some kind of push, they're not doing the lineup. The lineup is just that. So they have a little bit more of a DD than maybe even the jump there. You know, the jump's going to be the easiest thing they do. But the skill is they're lined up. That is that, that they're showing control and they're simply falling in. The idea, that's a, tempt, that's a tempting thing for the divers, okay? But if they end up doing some kind of a press or something like that, they've done a deficient lineup and the judges should be scoring that accordingly. You should be pointing that out, but no, we don't go from lineup to change it to a dive. Absolutely not. And thank you for bringing that up. That's a very good point. It doesn't go both ways, if you will. Are we all clear with that? That makes sense? I hope so. Not hearing anything. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yep. Okay. So again, um, performing a lineup instead of a dive is not a failed dive. Again, that's where you can, they go ahead and change it. And that's the only exception to the rule. Referee declare that lineup, as I mentioned, what that was performed, instruct the judges to score accordingly and instruct the meet secretary to adjust the DD and change the sheet. Uh, it's a change from a 101 to an 001, whatever it may, however it may apply there. Okay. The calls on the twisting dives here. You're looking for that over or under twisting of the dive. The criteria, again, it's going to be first contact with the water. Where is the shoulder position at first contact with the water? I do understand in other leagues that they call it to where it's not just first contact. Are they maintaining it? Are they keeping it legal all the way through before they go through the surface of the water? Well, kind of the problem with that is that how you really – how are you really going to justify seeing a shoulder position? Because if they're going in head first, first contact, you know where the shoulders are if they're still legal. But in that quick moment, how are you going to know where they are, where the shoulders are, if they've already had the shoulders below the surface, but yet the torso and everything is still out of the water? So for our, for our purposes here, you're only looking for where are the shoulders in terms of first contact with the water, whether it's head first or feet first? Where are the shoulders? You're going to get some of those borderline calls, but I emphasize and I stress to you, if it's that close, I like to say in other sports, eat your whistle. If you know what I mean, um, don't make the call. Just go ahead, give the benefit of the doubt to the diver and move on. If it's that close, the judges really ought to be doing their job and scoring that accordingly because they, they're on the border and that's, that's not good, okay? Again, I mentioned the illegal use of tuck. These are the particular uh, dives that they are allowed to use a tuck position, but otherwise they're doing a combination of the straight or pike position or there are some other dives that are actually listed in here they will specifically say whether they're going to use a pike position or uh, or a tuck position. Um, there are some of those that only allow you to use a straight position. Okay, um, but look at the table and and you know, again that should be getting posted on the website soon enough. Um, just go through that after the meet. You want to make sure that you go through. Now here's the thing I got to bring up here. There should be or there should there's supposed to be an official dual meet result sheets for these dual meets. My understanding and talking to the league president, they, that may not be happening. So what you may end up signing off on may end up being a roster or some kind of a running sheet that the meet secretary may come up with. That's fine for this year. I think you're just going to have to make do with what we got. So there may not be that, you know, you know, the triplicate, triplicate form of the yellow, white, pink copy that may not exist because those would have the line there where you as a referee are supposed to sign. That may not exist. And that's OK. You just want to make sure that the team scores are right. You go from there. Um, I'm just peeking at the questions here as we're going. Uh, are we going at a good pace here, folks? Am I, am I going over the top of your heads here? Hopefully we're good. I want to take a quick look at the questions here. Uh, what prevails if the dive is written down correct number and position, but the description, yeah. As I mentioned about this on the dive sheets, the numbers, 
the number of uh, the number on the dive is what takes precedent. If the description is wrong, it doesn't make any difference. In our league, that doesn't play into that. You hope they've got the positions on there, uh, but we don't have a provision on that. You simply got to make sure that there's going to be a provision, uh, a position written down on the sheet. Um, again, we don't have a provision if they happen to miss that as well. But what's key is they make sure that they have a correct dive number. The description could be completely wrong, but hopefully that gets corrected. So you as a referee will say, hey, this is your dive number. And you can even say to the diver, this is the dive number, is this the dive you're doing? It could be something written incorrectly, but it doesn't matter if the description is wrong. That can be corrected. Um, now, the other thing, that, that second part of that question, I guess is from Tom, says if a diver does a dive number, but not the one that was announced. I, I guess what I'm asking- let me, try, let me try to explain this, because I've, I've had this, it seems like it's like a weird question, but it's happened to me every year. So it's either misread because some coaches don't actually write the description, they just write the note, they just write the number, and the announcer gets it wrong, and so the kid hears it, and he dives what he hears. Mm -hmm. Um, well, you're, yeah, it's er, er, is the announcer reading the number? Yeah, but he he says he says he says B, and then it, and then he says he says B, but then he announces it uh, as a tuck because he because he's a new announcer and he doesn't you know he doesn't refer quickly to the positions he he messes up he messes up and it's not written down for him. So the so some kids here or the or the flip side of it is just that. Um, what I was trying to say is, is that uh, the diver dives the number because the kid can't do a pike. He never does. He's never done a pike, so he just he dives what he knows is written down, but it wasn't what was announced. So okay. you're sitting there uh, trying to. Uh, so the number prevails. So then you have to get up and go s say what was what was written, and the and, and you're getting ready to say it was failed. The, the coach. Says no, he didn't, you know, and, and it's like, what's not what was written down? I mean, I've had to stop meets because of this little discrepancy. So, what well, here, here's a scenario that's going to happen, and it can happen. Say he does a 103, it gets announced as a 103B. Right. Okay. Kid gets up there and does a 103C. Right. And you declare uh, wrong position. Wrong position. And then the coach says it was, it, it was, it's written down as 103C. Mm -hmm. And it was announced as 103B. Okay. Well, so then, well, then again. you go to the sh then you go and if you see the number, you say, okay, he's good. Because mm -hmm. he did the nine, he did because it was just read wrong. He did it because he's done it like a thousand times in practice. He knows that he does C and not B. Then he's good. But I guess the then there's the then there, like, I'm not even sure if I'm describing it correctly. There's the flip of that. Oh, I understand that. But what then needs to happen? This is where this is where you really gotta you really gotta press on them because if you hear if you hear that and it happens to be that they read a description and they you hear 103B and then they call it we're doing a one and a half tuck right the referee will catch yeah. that right yes they stop say right. wait a minute what what are what are we doing here because again it's going back to the number the number says you're doing a 103B diver and then the diver says well i don't want to do that the diver can change that position right and in this case they can lower they can take the that the the new position it's not changing the dive but they'll take the lower dd and in this case it happens to be the lower dd so everything is fine so but it's those things that you as a referee you hope you catch that because if you didn't catch that you're not going to be in a very good position to penalize the diver if you missed it. And they can always go down. So if they're on the board and like, if they say 51, 23, the kid goes, well, I can't do one and a half twists. Can they? Yeah, if he hasn't started to, if, right. Well, they can, if he's standing on the board and the dive gets announced and he he's reading, he's being read a dive and said, I, I, I didn't, uh, who wrote that down? I didn't do that. I can't, I, I can't do that dive. Okay. Again, here, here's where it is. This is why we have divers sign the sheet. This is why we have coaches sign the sheet. Right. 
if they've done something incorrect, I mean, that's a, that carries a lot of weight for the divers. They got to do their jobs. Okay. Especially those coaches got to do their jobs and make sure. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on here. Is that answer? Your question? Yes, sir. I mean, I'll, I'll come offline. And okay. I don't okay. Even, that's I don't fine. I don't know if I'm describing it correctly. Let okay. me just move this along. I want to get, yeah. I know we're Sorry. running out of time here. Okay. Right. Sorry. Um, Sorry. One of the last things I want to point out when you're there, you are the head official for the meet, but it's also important that you go ahead and find out who the pool manager on duty is. You want to know who the manager on duty is in case there's a problem. Um, if there's anything weather related and the pool manager says out of the water, you're out of the water. You as a referee don't make that call when it comes to weather. You also going to need that if by some remote possibility you have a problem with a participant or something and you need somebody removed, you need to know who the pool manager is. It's going to be their job to get that person off the deck and out of sight and probably outside the gate if it comes down to that. Hopefully not. Um, everybody understand that? Make sure you know who the pool manager is on duty. It's good to know that. That way, if you have problems, you'll know who to go to. But again, you don't supersede the pool manager in terms of weather-related issues. you got to make sure that they call that. and the Weather-related, you adhere to that. It's not your call. Stop the meet, suspend the meet, continue it some other time later that day or the next day or another date, whatever is going to be appropriate. Okay? Um, so here, just to wrap it up here, we're going to run through here. I know we're a little bit behind here. But I thought it'd be fun to go ahead and just run through a few of these uh, questions with you. Um, so you guys have your mics on. Go ahead and shout them out. So here's your first question. Diver who becomes 11 on or after June 2nd shall compete in which age group? 11, 12. 9, 10. All right. Because they they're 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 they they beam eleven. Hmm. They're still nine and ten before that June first cutoff. So they can stay in the nine ten, even though they're eleven. Okay, the dive executed, which does not appear on the dive sheet, is what? Failed dive. Failed dive. You no, know, it's failed. Absolutely. Okay, if a dive has been performed partially in a position other than announced, who's going to declare a break in position? That'd be you all, right? The ref. Yep. yep, the referee with a maximum score of? Four and, uh, half. Four and, and a half. half. Four and a half. Four and a half. There you go. Okay. If one or both arms are above the shoulders on a dive with a feet first entry, jumps excluded, the referee shall declare what? How many points max? Two. Two. If the arm. Wrong the position. position. Wrong arm position. What is it? Four and a half. Four and there you half. go. Four and a half. Good. The referee declares what when a diver makes an obvious attempt to start a dive and then stops. Bulk. Bulk. Again, I put reference to the page numbers to look for all this stuff. Okay. That's a balk. Very good. Okay. Dive sheet that has not been signed by the diver. The, the referee does what? If they didn't sign the sheet, what do you got? Not a diver. <laughs> Invalid. Eligible. It's an invalid sheet. And the referee disqualifies the diver. They got to sign their sheets. It be that way, but you got to, that's why you kind of make sure that's going to be up to the folks in charge, make sure everything gets signed. It's very important. That okay. happened to us at divisionals one year in division one. That's a, well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Yeah. It's got to happen. You figure when you have a break established and all that, keep in mind, if you see a, if you know there's a dive sheet and they haven't signed it, as long as their event hasn't started yet, and you need a signature, you may have already gotten the eight and unders done. Just because the dive sheets are in, if they're, there's something incomplete and, and can be corrected, like the diver didn't sign the sheet, figure out, go call the coach over and have him sign that sheet before that event starts. Because once the event starts, you got to disqualify the diver. That's an invalid sheet. You got to go from there. Okay, a dive sheet that has correct dive numbers, but no description, the referee must what? Fill it in. What's ask that? Nicely. Can you ask to fill it in? It's got the dive numbers and all that, but no description. What What do you do? Score the dive. You just yep. Yeah, you allow the diver. To 
It's not a problem. Okay. That's the point. The description really doesn't count. You could like, yet, like I said before, you can have grandma's best apple pie recipe written in the description. It doesn't matter. What's key is that you make sure you've got the numbers on there, position, uh, and, and, but the description, you can fix that. Excessive rocking or a crow hop on the diving board shall result in what, who deducting how many points? Judges, one and a half to two. Yeah, there's a half to two points is, is a good number there, okay? Okay, which age group of divers may use the 200 back jump as an optional dive? Eight and under. And nine tens, I think. And nine tenths, yeah. Can you use the two the two hundred back jump as an optional dive. Yeah, which, which age group? Isn't could the eight. older age group? I think all six. Really, I can't all of them. Any of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's important. Okay, we'll talk about jumps and stuff coming up here. A required dive listed out of order can be corrected by who? Under the yeah. the, the the instruction of who? If the dive hasn't been completed, who are you working with, folks? Coaches. The, the coach. meat secretary. No, no, the no. meat secretary. The, the meat secretary. No. There's a meat secretary. Can correct that under the direction of you, the referee, okay? You're working with that meat secretary. That's the point there. You can correct that if something is listed out of whack there. You can go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, the who must ask, ask the who to determine if a dive may be repeated. We have a situation where... The diver must ask the right. ref. The diver's got to ask you, the referee, if they can repeat that, okay? that The reason I put that in there is because it's not the coach asking. It, the diver has to ask, not the coach. Coach is always jumping in there if something goes where Can we do it again? No. I didn't hear from the diver. The diver appears to hit the board during the flight through the air. Point deductions are determined by who? The ref. Referee or the judges? Judge. that's going to be the judges okay they're going to have to make a determination on point deductions but there is nothing explicit about hitting the board but that ends up mm -hmm. being the judges to decide because there's going to be some deficiencies there but it isn't technically a deficient dive although it's quite dangerous because it never seems to be a good thing and we're not talking about the ponytail hitting the board or anything like that. That's not the body, okay, or the hand or something like that, okay? We're talking about a body part, not the hair. But the judges are going to be the ones to do that. Different leagues, we're going to make different calls. Um, I know that ends up being maybe a two-point max in high school, uh, really what it comes down to. Okay, quick, question, I, quick question on number 11. So if the, if the coaches are asking – Hey, uh, can we get that repeated diving? You say, no, 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 you're not the diver asking for it. And then the diver says, well, can I do it yeah. again? Then yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Once you hear the diver say, you know, because maybe the diver doesn't want to do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but by rule, the diver is the one who's supposed to ask. Okay. So they can get prompted through that, that, in, right. that exchange. That's not a problem. The diver is doing the dive, not the coach. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. There you go. Thank you. No problem. Okay. If a diver fails to perform the dive announced, the who shall what the dive? Referee shall, shall fail the dive. Referee is going to fail that dive. If they didn't do the dive, it was listed. Okay, the who uh, and the what shall review all scores, tabulations immediately after each meet to verify the diver who earned uh, team points or eligible to earn team points. So again, just mention them. Who's that? The ref and the meet secretary. Go, yeah. You make sure you're in there working again. Reference on the pages there, folks. Um, if a diver, in the opinion of the referee, does not make a sincere effort to come out of a pike or tuck before beginning the entry of a dive, meaning they didn't get enough height, um, the referee shall declare the dive what, and instruct the nice. judges to a maximum of what? Two points. points. Yeah, you know, it's it's declared unsatisfactory. They didn't make an effort to come out of that. So it's a two-point max. Okay. True or false, real quick, for a diver 12 and under, a very good dive should receive a maximum score of five and a half. False. False. God, I hope it is. Uh, meet canceled during the 13-14 event for reasons of weather and other, other things uh, shall completely start over from the eight and under event when it is rescheduled. False. False. That's false. 
Okay, you're in the middle of round two for the 13-14 event, and the skies opened up. You have one diver that went off the board, and then you have to suspend the meat and pick it up. Where do you restart? Mm -hmm. Second diver. That round. That round with the second diver? Or yep. Nope, 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 nope. You start that round completely over because oh. not all the divers went off, but you do start back at that. If it happens to be that first round, for the, the 13, 14s, you're starting that first round over, even though they started. Now, there's the key to that is that when you reschedule, there's a caveat here. If you reschedule, remember also, and maybe I didn't mention it, but other, we've always had the rule that when a meet is rescheduled, and as long as their event hasn't started, you can add divers as long as they're eligible. But in this case here, the 13 and 14 event has already started, even though you're starting the, the first round over, that, that event has already started and it's locked. So the participants who are in there are the participants that are gonna finish it. Are you all understand that? Mm -hmm. There's a yes. big difference. Yes. As long as the event hasn't started, but if it has started and it has to be Start it back over. It doesn't matter if it's round one, round two, round three, round four, round five. You get it. Okay. Real important. The announcer shall read the judges' scores in the same chair order throughout each event. True. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. The referee will discuss and review MCDL rules with all judges immediately before each meet. True. Absolutely. You better be doing that. I hope you are. <laughs> Got to make sure you're covering all that stuff. Okay. All divers must perform their required dives in the same order. True. Yes, True. absolutely. Their optional dives could be different if need be. That's fine. Okay. Um, in twisting dives, a diver is allowed to begin the twisting motion before the feet leave the board. False. False. Absolutely false. Unfortunately, that's a rule that I was hoping we'd have changed in, uh, for this, this season, but it didn't. Uh, this league, we're pretty harsh about it. Other leagues aren't quite so bad, but it is what it is. Okay, here's the next one. Any 13 and up diver may not perform dive 100 or 200 in any championship meet. False. False. It's not going to apply this year. True. Okay, on NBC's first True or false? True. True? False. Oh, oh, false. Oh, I'm sorry, you switched false. the slide. <laughs> sorry, that's false. Like I said, it's false. What we have the rule in place, and it's not going to apply because I don't think all stars are happening this year. But when it came down to it, you had kids that could do the jumps leading up to uh, and through the divisional meets. But if they qualified for all stars, they had to come up with another dive, or they didn't compete if they were if they only had a jump. That's the only place the 13 and up couldn't do a jump in an all star meet, but. Probably won't apply this year. Here's another one. A referee may immediately remove any official coach or diver from the meet. I see thumbs up. How many say it's true? It's true. I don't want to, but yeah, sure. You what? True or false? Probably don't want to do it, but true. How many say true? True. 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 Well, as John McLaughlin would say, wrong. You got to warn them first. Now, if they're, if, they're, if they're working on their French and they throw one out, you give them a polite warning, say you're going to stop that, and then they don't do it, then you can remove them. But you got to warn them first. Okay. A diver who has failed two dives may still be eligible for team points. False. False. That is, false. Yeah, no, that's false. Yeah. Now, they're, they could be exhibition, and they could go ahead and you know keep going, maybe. A protest can be made against the marks awarded by the judges. Well, I think it's true if they do it immediately. Do you have the backs of the judges at all times? Yes. Yes. And what's the answer? False. False. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Those those answers. You, you, you've got to make sure you've got their backs. You may not agree with that judge's call. Doesn't matter. You have their back. Okay. Very important. Okay. Now, next one, referee may pause the meet and consult the rule book before making any ruling decisions. Yeah. True. True. Absolutely. You feel like you got to do it, do it. Not a problem. Okay. 
Here's another one. Dive with a half twist. A dive of less than 90 degrees or more than 270 degrees is a failed dive. Oh. True. true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Is it under twisted or over twisted? And that half twist, that 90 degree benchmark, whether it's that way or that way. Okay. Divers can perform two optional dives for the same age group or uh, same dive group. False. Right. That's false. They got to go with something else. You got to, the optional dives have to come from different groups. Okay. Um, the meet referee is not required to sign the official meet result sheets. Um, well, yeah, uh, you, you, you are required uh, to, to do it. And like I said, it's probably going to end up for this year, it's going to end up being a roster or something like that. But at least you put your signature on something certifying that you that's the results are official. Okay. Um, a hurdle is required for every forward dive with or without an approach. False. Well, well, Good, good. Not required. You got standing things and all that. Um, a diver may eliminate an optional dive, fail another dive, optional or required, and remain in the competition for team points. I know this is an admitted oh. question. Oh. Yeah, they can't. They can't stay in. Okay, if you've eliminated an optional dive, you say I'm just you know, I'm opting out, but you've already failed one. That's failing twice, technically. And you can stand for exhibition, but if you're opting out of dives, you probably don't want to dive anyway. So, all right, time to take a seat, okay? A competing diver who fails two dives may not perform the balance of his or her dives if there are still dives to perform. False. 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 True or false? False. Who said they could become exhibition? Yeah. They got dives. If they got them left and they're okay with it, they can go ahead and just finish up. They're just exhibition, and that's fine. You know, we're here to allow them to dive, dive as much as they can, okay? Um, next one is any diver that is diving up may eliminate opt-out of an optional dive and remain in the contest competing for team points. That's a dive-up diver. They're moving up to another age group. I think it's true. You can't do that. That's the, the one spot there. If you dive up, you you don't get the option of, of opting out of any dives. You're moving up with the, the for the purpose of helping your team, but that's what you you're locked in. You are required to do all of those dives. You don't have a choice. What if they just fail the dive, but it's only one dive? Well, if they failed one dive, that's again, that's that's a situation where they only failed one dive, and that's fine. If they fail two, then they're they're out of the out of the running for making team points. But again, they could be just like any other diver. If they have dives left, then they can go ahead and perform. Okay, again, there's the things I showed there to the judges here. That's a nice sheet. Hopefully get posted on the website. You all can look that over. Very handy for you as a referee to have on hand. It's got all the dives that we have in the league. This is not depicting correct that second sheet because it got clipped off. But I assure you the electronic copy you download and print will give the full list of dives on the front and the, the full listing of the twisting dives on the back and you'll be good to go, okay? There's another reference sheet that's on that I sent over. We should be able to have that on the website for you. This is a good thing to have when you're doing your pre-meet duties. Very handy, you can just kind of run down the list and go over those things. And if I have any questions, you can just reference right to it and you're all set to go, okay? And that's it, folks. Y'all did good. How'd you y'all enjoy that? I hope you did. Yeah, absolutely. We did. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Sorry, I kept you late here. Look at that. I did it again. Oh, my God. Sorry. Talk you. off for an hour. But look, folks, I hope it was worth the stay. I hope it was worthwhile to you. Um, you know, your your job does require a little bit more, you know, dedication <laughs> and, and prep work and so forth. But I think you all will do just fine. If you're new to this, um, I would suggest you find a veteran referee and work with them, have them shadow you. Um, that would be very good to do. I know when I first got into it, I was very happy that I had an excellent, uh, an excellent referee. As I still remember my very first meet way, way back in the day. It was, it was uh, Mrs. Dorsey from uh, Manor Woods who helped me out. And that's where it went from there. That was many, many moons ago. 
And I was very appreciative of being able to work with that veteran official and can't say enough about it. But that's also why we're here. You know, we're here for the right reasons to help these kids. So um, I wish you all luck this this summer. I realize it's been a challenge getting everybody back, um, but I think you all will do just fine. Um, I'll try to make myself available. You know, just let me know if you got any questions on things. I'll be glad to help out. But otherwise, yeah, thank you so much. Six, three years. Thanks, Steve. Thank you got you. it. Have a good night. Thank Take care, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, I said I wouldn't run long, and I did it anyways. Isn't that terrible? Hmm. You did what you can. Uh, thank you so much. Hey, David. Yes, ma'am. Um, we the next training going to be what the tenth, right? Sunday. Am I correct? Next Is next Thursday. Oh, next Thursday. Mm -hmm, Why did I think we have a? Uh, there on is one on a Sunday. I mean, well. on a Sunday, on the That's 13th. The 13th. The 13th. I get my date incorrectly. Okay. Mark it. Steve, you keep getting better. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Just wish I didn't have to talk so much, but, you know, especially with the referees, it's just, it's a, it's a lot of material to try to just get crammed in. And I'm always hopeful that I'm, I'm doing more of a service for 